Devin Davis presents Justice League Mortal. Adapted from George Miller's unproduced screenplay by Kieran and Michelle Moroni. Featuring the voice talents of Brett Jameson, Chase Glue, Katie Jarvis, Colt Brown, Bryson Alley, Dorsey Williams, Joey Shepard, Brendan French, Olivia Aki, Alex Glover, Sharona Eskeets, and James Carter. A dark sky, a single letter, just one out of 26, but maybe the most iconic letter on earth. It's the S on Superman's chest, the symbol of truth, of justice, the symbol of everything that's right with the world, but something's wrong. It's not red on a field of gold and blue. It's black, black on black, and the man behind the S, the sentinel and protector, the man of steel, Superman, floats still and weightless his all-black uniform stark against the sky. The sad sound of tolling bells leads down to Metropolis. It's deserted. No traffic, no people. Justice, truth, peace. Superman glides through the canyon of skyscrapers like he's the last creature on Earth, to the cathedral spires, reaching. And here, a colossal crowd of thousands and thousands of citizens, all looking skyward at Superman, Descending gently. The words themselves so simple, the concept so pure, and yet... The cathedral's vast interior is stained glass lit, and Superman walks down the long central aisle past mourners, all heads bowed, row after row to the front, and there they are, the Justice League. The world's heroes, all dressed in mourning black, where is justice, we ask, when in the battle for peace the mightiest among us has fallen? Where truth, when such terrible things befall those we love? Flashes of iconic symbols, costumes and insignia, profiles, eyes downcast, faces turned away. But even in glimpses, they are familiar. Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, The Flash, The Martian Manhunter, all there, all except for Batman. A coffin in a somber amber light. Could it be? Wonder Woman is at the lectern, a eulogy. We know that forces of darkness will always threaten this planet, and we know that to fight them will take all of our powers. The sound of bells echo in Metropolis' Central Avenue. The superheroes carry the casket on their shoulders, feeling the weight, the burden. But we also know those of us who come from different lands, from different worlds, we know where truth lies, where peace can be found, where justice is. We know, because he taught us. People, silent, lining the streets as far as the eye can see, to a gravesite, surrounded by seven solemn, black-clad heroes. The casket is lowered into the ground. It is in the human heart. The roll of thunder, a spattering of rain. Two days ago, the world is at peace. And suddenly the sun is shining bright on downtown Central City, where Detective Barry Allen and his wife, Iris, walk hand in hand toward a restaurant with a brash neon sign, Planet Krypton. Don't you ever get tired of this place? Oh, come on, it makes me laugh. And anyway, I am starving. What else is new? They push through the revolving doors into a big, busy nationwide chain restaurant, upscale family dining with a superhero theme. Walls lined with reproductions of capes, masks, weapons, artifacts, and the staff all in costume. Green Lantern waiters pass Wonder Woman waitresses. Aquaman busboys clean tables. A Martian manhunter tends the bar. As Barry drags a reluctant iris, he doesn't notice a Batman waiter weaving through tables, carrying a full tray of drinks. An elbow, the tray, oops, and gravity takes over. All six glasses overturn, soda goes everywhere. But, at impossible speed, in real time, Barry grabs the tray, catches the glasses, and manages to refill each one before a drop touches the ground. He calmly hands the refilled tray back to the waiter. Barry? I know, I know. He pulls her to a booth. A waiter in an ill-fitting flash costume steps up, oversized menus in hand. 
Hi, I'm the Flash, and I'll be your server today. Hi there, Flash. I will have, let's see, two crypto burger platters, both Superman sized, and a large Wonder Slaw. Plus, let's go ahead and add an Aquaman, just the sandwich, but with extra tartar sauce and coffee. The waiter stares. Barry shrugs. <laughs> Fast metabolism. I'll have the chicken Caesar. And Flash. Make it quick, will ya? <laughs> Barry laughs. Iris rolls her eyes. The waiter, too. Funny. Never heard that one. And he ambles off to put in their order. Slowly. While he's coming in tonight, Sissy says he's all excited about working in the lab. But Barry's not listening. His attention is on the flat screen TVs over the bar. A news broadcast. Barry. He points up at the TV. Sorry, honey, it's just Wonder Woman's addressing the UN. On the TV monitor is Wonder Woman in front of the UN General Assembly. Those of us who come here from different worlds, we know how hard it is to choose peace. War, conflict, they are easy. It is peace that is hard. Her presence, her otherworldly beauty, awesome. At the table. What is it with you and her? Wonder Woman? Just look at her. That is one aptly named superhero, you know what I mean? <clears throat> what? Over this, a voice. Brother I, begin metahuman status scan. Subject, the Flash. And now, above the restaurant, way above the restaurant, through the upper atmosphere and into outer space, where a sleek, silicone black satellite drifts impassively over the planet. Sinister, aggressive. This is Brother I. Its glass lens iris opens, glows red, and far, far below, beneath the Earth's surface, the Bat Cave, deep, deep underground, under Wayne Manor, the secret sanctuary of Batman. He's at the console of a massive computer system with a 10 foot video monitor. He's unshaven, feet up, watching, always watching. On the screen, an infrared image Barry and Iris Allen at Planet Krypton. Next to the video feed, a readout scrolls down the left side of the screen. Everything you could ever want to know about the Flash. His identity, location, associates, his powers. And at the bottom, a subfile titled, Weaknesses. The machine speaks. The Flash status inactive. Continue. All subjects scan. Affirmative. Scan. The satellite image roves with blinding speed, finds Metropolis, the city's Centennial Park. Brother Eye Flash zooms closer and closer on Clark Kent. The glasses, the carefully parted hair, eating a paper bag lunch on a park bench. A kid tugs his kite, stuck in a tree. Clark purses his lips and blows. The gust of wind frees the kite and almost pulls the kid off his feet. Location. Powers. Status. Superman. Inactive. A whir as the computer searches for Green Lantern, in uniform, demonstrating his powers for a bunch of first graders in a school classroom. He holds a kid's drawing of a unicorn on a cloud, and with his power ring, he brings it to life. Green and three-dimensional, the kid's mouths hang open in wonder. Location. Powers. Status. Green Lantern. Active. Non-operational. Next, Wonder Woman at the United Nations. Wonder Woman, active, non-operational. Then, Denver, Colorado, the satellite sweeps the city. The Martian Manhunter, scan. A shuffle of feet behind him. Batman reacts, paranoid. Terminate. The screen instantly goes black. As a figure steps out of the shadows, it's Alfred, his butler, his friend. All quiet, Master Bruce? Too quiet. Well, world peace has a way of doing that. Maybe it's time we started thinking of things as promising, dare say we. Peace isn't a promise, Alfred. It's an intermission, a threat. Point noted. Still, crime is down to a mere nuisance. The city is generally quiet, and the sun does shine, sir. So I've heard. All your time down here in the dark, monitoring them, some might say you've become somewhat... Paranoid? What if? Alfred... What if something happens? They're not human, none of them. Not fully. And with their powers? If not me, who is going to watch them? 
what if. You see what I'm saying? I believe you're saying what if, sir. <laughs> Bruce smiles. The sun's shining, huh? Yes, and your guests are waiting. My guests? Your surprise birthday party, sir. Oh, that. Surprise? Uh. Batman sighs, gets to his feet. He heads for the elevator, followed by Alfred. As the doors slide closed, the blackened monitor screen blinks. Once, a burst of code races across the screen. Numbers, letters, zeros and ones, words gradually coalescing. Create a directive override. In the Batcave elevator, Batman and Alfred, in a well-rehearsed ritual, remove the Batsuit. The mask pulled back to reveal Bruce Wayne. Now in Wayne Manor, a packed party. Rooms full of world leaders, players and stars, business and military. Europe, Asia, Saudi Arabia, the Fortune 500. Over this, a voice, confident, refined. Take a look around and tell me what you see. Flashes of decadence, people lounging on sofas, huddled in whispering groups. Rock stars duel on guitars to the delight of a gaggle of supermodels. A Saudi prince bows to a Japanese sumo wrestler. We've got princes, members of parliament, admirals, oilmen, media moguls. The people he's talking about, an Asian businessman, an Arab sheik, a navy admiral, a diplomat in a Seville row suit. The best and the brightest. The room is filled with movers and shakers surrounding Maxwell Lord. And the most beautiful creatures on God's green earth. The best dressed, best looking man in the mansion. A circle of beautiful women in his thrall. By which I mean me, of course. <laughs> in the Batcave, the brother eye system, running itself, the eerie computerized voice, Creative protocols inoperative. Intercept activated. Subject alpha located. The brother eye cam digitally zooms, step by step, closer and closer, descending down to find one single man. Detective John Jones, mid-thirties, blue suit and tie, the perfect cop, driving his unmarked police Ford. Target identified. The Martian Manhunter. Auto attack sequence initiated. Stand by. Under the Wayne Manor, Batman's elevator glides upward through a deep underground cavern, past a catacomb. You look around and you see power, I bet. Money, right? And why not? In the Wayne Manor, Maxwell is with his audience. They hang on his words. Even with everything I've got, my telecom interest, my little real estate empire, my restaurant chains, those two guys alone could buy and sell me a dozen times over. He points at two CEOs, shaking hands. When I look around, you want to know what I see? I see three and a half billion years. Inside the bat elevator, Alfred closets the bat suit. Bruce Wayne runs a shaver over three days of stubble, pressed white shirt. Three and a half billion years of life on this planet. Nature relentlessly pursuing perfection across eons of time. Punishing the weak, rewarding the strong. All for one single reason. So we could come here today and sing happy birthday to... In the Batcave elevator, the transformation is complete. Batman faces the doors. You might want to try a smile. Batman shows his teeth, unconvincing. The doors of the elevator open. Bruce Wayne. And finally, Bruce Wayne steps out. His smile says he didn't see it coming when they all yell, Surprise! Surprise! as he wades into the crowd. Meanwhile, Detective John Jones is in his car in Denver, crunching over gravel. He pulls up next to a railway fueling station. He gets out, approaches a stack of fuel barrels, pulls a pen light, shines it in the cracks. Detective mm. Jones reaches between barrels and pulls out a jar. Mm. Murky liquid. Plant material. Seaweed. Shines his light into the cloudy water and spots something undulating inside, something alive. John Jones slides behind the wheel of his idling car, pulls a plastic bag and a pair of tweezers from the glove box, carefully unscrews the lid, reaches into the water with his evidence tools and gingerly pulls out a creature, like a seahorse, only bigger, stranger, alien-looking. Hmm. As he leans in for a closer look, it coughs. <laughs> and a mist of particulate matter stings his hands. He drops the jar, wipes his hands, smearing the gritty, oily fluid. As he looks down for the strange creature, his hands begin smoking, his skin, wisps of smoke. 
He stares as first one, then the other, burst into flame. Then his arms, his chest, his head. He is a ball of flame. He goes for the radio. Dispatch, code 30, code 30. But the handset's already melted, and the fire's spreading. He's got to do something, so he morphs, transforming, changing shape. A soldier, a little kid, a gorilla, a python, anything to try to put out the flames. Nothing works. So he reverts to his real shape. Not John Jones, the Denver PD detective, but Jean Jones, the Martian Manhunter. His true ah! self, massive, ah! green, ah! iron brow, red eyes, ah! screaming in agony because ah! he's become an inferno. Ah! He hits the gas, peels out, barely in control of the car, fire gushing out behind like contrails. He veers, clipping a fuel tanker. The fire catches, and Jean Jones guns it through the wall of fire. Inside the Wayne Manor, back at the party, Bruce Wayne is surrounded. Handshakes, birthday kisses, he's the life and soul. Maxwell Lord steps up with his gaggle of beauties, gives Bruce a bear hug. Who knew you had so many friends? Oh, they're just here because I'm obscenely rich. Bruce, playing the dilettante, they laugh. Two of a kind, under his breath. We both know without men like you and me to grease their wheels, most of these jokers will be waiting tables at one of my restaurants. Bruce nods to a long buffet table, loaded with food, retro-American style, stacks of perfect hamburgers in perfect buns. I hear you did the catering. One of the benefits of my little sideline business, free dinner. Have you tried the crypto burgers? Oh, I don't eat food with names, Max. Planet Krypton's in every major city on the planet? Over a million served? The whole world can't be wrong. Men and women crowd the table, loading their plates. In the Planet Krypton restaurant, Barry Allen eats like a horse. Wonder Woman's a bit of a show-off, don't you think? And how come she gets all the credit for world peace? Hey, I guess I've played my part. Not you. I was thinking Green Lantern. And Aquaman? Now he's hot. And don't even get me started on Superman. I mean, come on. Warm smiles between them, like you only see with people who have been in love a long time. On the TV screen, a news broadcast is in progress. From Denver, Colorado, where we're told fires are currently raging out of control all over the city. Video footage of a burning car. Jean Jean's weaving through traffic at 90 miles per hour. He loses control, slams into an overpass guardrail, blasts right through. The car catches air, flips, and it lands on the roof of a fuel depot at Denver International Airport. A fireball spits out, hits a tanker. Flames shoot, sky high, at the table with Barry and Iris. How far is Denver from here? Oh, come on, Barry. One uninterrupted lunch. 600 miles? Pfft. I'll be back before the coffee's cold. I promise. You can't save the whole world, you know. Not the whole world, just the little part with you in it. Go. Barry leans in for a quick kiss, then twists the ring he wears on his right hand. A streak of red fabric bursts out of the ring and, in less than a heartbeat, Barry's standing there, decked out in his trademark uniform. Red and gold, muscles and speed. He's the Flash. Magnificent. Back in a sec. And all that's left of him is a vibrant streak of red. He's gone just vanished. Then, he's back for a quick kiss on Iris's cheek. Gone again, leaving in a flurry of napkins and menus and the revolving door spinning like crazy. The Flash is on the move. The Scarlet Speedster zigzags and weaves through towns, along rail lines, across the prairies, up mountains, through the streets of Denver, Colorado, and arrives at the Denver International Airport. Flash skids to a stop on the tarmac. Firefighters surround the burning tanker, Hit it with foam from dozens of hoses, smoke, and flames. Allow me, boys. And he's off, running circles around the fire, faster and faster, creating a vortex that sucks the air out of the center. One of the firemen is too close. He sucked off his feet into the tornado, flung 50 feet into the air. Flash pulls up, satisfied with his work. Then hears the screams, looks up to see the firefighter plummeting. My bad. I got it. I got it. He streaks to a fire truck, grabs the fire blanket, circles it into position under the fireman. Ready, ready, and a figure streaks across the sky, picks the man out of midair, red, white, and blue, gold, iconic, Wonder Woman. She drops out of the smoke with the fireman in her arms, lands gently, and puts him on his feet. 
Flash stares, mouth hanging open, awestruck. Whoa, you're... it's... wow, I mean, you're... Wonder Woman. That's... I... I was just... hi, I'm... The Flash, yes. You've heard of me, really? Wow, I, I'm a huge fan. You know, I gotta say, your pictures do not do you justice. The Flash sticks out his hand like an idiot. Wonder Woman stares at it. I totally had that, by the way. In the distance, flying low in the sky, a flying ball of fire. What is that? It streaks right over their heads, trailing flames, right for the main terminal. Wait here, I'll run it down. Wonder Woman looks at Flash. Wait here? And she takes off, running. The Flash catches up easily. Is that the best you've got? She lifts off the ground, flying fast. Hey, flying's not fair. He kicks it up a notch. The fireball careens around and under planes parked at their sky ports. People gawk from inside. The Flash speeds over to a massive water standpipe, starts to crank the valve wheel to Wonder Woman. Use your rope thingy. Lasso of truth. Whatever, yank him over here. She unhitches her lasso, throws a loop, bullseye, yanks the fireball over to Flash. He opens the spout and thousands of gallons of water shoot straight up, then rain down in sheets right on top of the fire. Through the cascade, a hunched and hulking figure. What is that thing? Help! Help me! The Flash looks around. Did you hear that? It's telepathic. The voice again, coming from everywhere at once. Diana, please! Wonder Woman's eyes go wide. It knows you. It's Jean Jean's. Martian Manhunter. And Jean steps out of the thundering sheets of water, his eyes blazing red, his skin charcoaled and blackened. Isn't he supposed to be green? And he bursts into flame again. Inside the Wayne Manor, Bruce sits in a deep sofa, fond over like a pasha. Maxwell Lord is next to him. Max sees something across the room. Oh my, my, my. Bruce turns to look and involuntarily rises to his feet, because there, just entering the room, is Talia. Tall, exotic, haunted, from some other country, some other world almost. An achingly perfect beauty. Maxwell rises next to Bruce, whispers in his ear as every eye in the room turns to see. You know who that is? Bruce isn't listening, speechless, his eyes riveted. That, my friend, is Talia al Ghul, daughter of Ross, the demon head. Her dark, Almond eyes burn into Bruce. There's something here between them, something powerful. You must remember, it's legend almost. Roz fought the Batman, and lost, and now he's gone, and here she is. Bruce is watching, waiting. The look in his eyes, so intense, every head in the room turns to see what he sees. She was in love with the Batman, or so they say. Maxwell Lord's eyes are equally intense, shifting from Bruce to Talia. He's drilling deep into this moment. She betrayed her father for him. Or so they say. And a small drop of blood trickles from his nose. Talia takes a slow, stately, sexy walk across the room. As people part, opening a path straight for Bruce. And in return he broke her heart. Or so they say. Bruce's eyes see. Remember. One year ago. Batman with Talia in his arms. The beauty in the bat face to face, inches apart. Talia kisses him, and he kisses her, then pulls away. Talia, no, I can't. But, my father, I've given you, beloved, everything. She is a well of desperation, doesn't want to let go. Can never give you what you want. This isn't goodbye. But he nods, touches her lips with his fingertips, backs away, and disappears into the darkness. Her eyes fill with sorrow. Then, fury. Talia is now right in front of Bruce. It's like they're both in a trance, drowning in each other. It looks like a kiss waiting to happen. In a breathy whisper, A birthday kiss, Mr. Wayne. For good luck. The room holds its breath. Then, Master Wayne, And Bruce snaps out of it, like waking from a dream. Would you like to blow out the candles, or shall I? Alfred holds the birthday cake. As Bruce leans in to blow out the candles, Alfred whispers, 
Something needs your immediate attention, sir. Applause from the guests and a spontaneous rendition of Happy Birthday to You. Uh, if you'll excuse me. He shoots a look to Maxwell, sees the blood on his upper lip. Max, your nose is bleeding. He pulls a handkerchief and leaves Maxwell, dabbing his nose. Yeah, thanks. I'm prone. Bruce and Alfred walk down a side hallway, apart from the guests. The system alarms. It's the Martian Jean Jean. He's been attacked. How? Fire. Bruce stops in his tracks. Worry moves across his eyes. He glances back through a doorway to see Talia looking back at him. Party's over. Send everyone home. He moves off. In New York, the facade of a magnificent Art Deco building on the edge of Central Park. At the very top is Wonder Woman's Conservatory. The Martian Manhunter has his eyes closed, his skin still blackened. He is submerged in Wonder Woman's ornate bathing pool. How long can we leave him in there all soggy? Wonder Woman throws open the doors to the terrace. Outside, a figure, silhouetted against the lights of the Manhattan skyline, strides toward us. Blue, red, and gold. Superman. He steps through the doors, takes Wonder Woman's hands in his. Two old friends. Diana. Cal. It's been too long. Always. Flash. It's hard not to be awed by the legend up close. Superman, sir. Nice to meet you. What happened here? Flash, the detective, has got theories. Talks fast. Okay, best guess, magnesium. It doesn't mix well with oxygen. Very explosive combination. Could be a compound bonded with his skin cells, a serum. But if you ask me, I'd say it was microtechnology, nanotech. I'd have to get a sample to my lab. They are interrupted by a voice, deep and striking. Superman. Cal. Flash spins, then remembers. It's okay. He's got telepathy. You knew that. Superman kneels by the side of the pool. Jean's red eyes look up through the water, imploring. He reaches a massive hand out into the air towards Superman and... It bursts into flame. He resubmerges, leaving a wisp of smoke behind. They knew my weakness. My gracious weakness. Fire. It destroyed my world, my family, my life. Someone... I am powerless. Who? Who knew? It is a secret I thought was unassailable. Who? How did they get to you? A note. I followed it. There was a creature. Strange. Like seaweed. A sea creature? It spat... Venom? I don't know. The rest was fire. And pain. Jean slowly sinks to the bottom of the pool. Outside on the terrace, Wonder Woman and Superman look up at the stars. Could it have been accidental? Just the wrong place at the wrong time? No. It looks like an attack to me, premeditated. Did you know his weakness? No. But someone did. And he was struck in his alter identity. Cal, I... Yes. That I really don't like. Inside, by the pool, Flash stares out at these two gods, inches apart. From here, it looks like romance. Did you see that? The two of them, is there something, you know, have they ever, oh, my wife would have a field day with. He glances to Jean in the pool, out cold. Oh, oh shoot, Iris. Outside on the terrace. A sea creature spitting fire. It doesn't make sense. You know where I'll have to go. Be careful. He won't like the insinuation. From what I've heard, he doesn't like anything. Suddenly, the flash appears between them. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but Iris, my wife, I'm supposed to get back and... Uh, will you be alright without me for a bit? I'm sure we'll manage. And with a crooked smile, Flash vibrates. So fast he disappears into the floor. Gone. The fast way out. By Hera, he's... He is indeed. On a construction site in Lower Manhattan, on construction barriers at ground level, Plastered with banners reading, Another Luxury Lord Enterprises Construction, Unit Starting at One Million, Available Next Summer. Far up this brand new high-rise building, steel girders towering over the Hudson, 30 stories tall. It's unfinished except for the top three floors. They're walled in floor-to-ceiling glass, 
a weak light inside Maxwell Lord's archive chamber. A darkened room, circular, walls lined with old TVs, 1970s era black and white, early color, consoles stacked to the ceiling, hundreds of them, and on each one a child's face. All boys, anywhere from 6 to 13 years old, flickering images, no sound, but they're all talking to the camera. Interview subjects, some giggling, some stoic, and some crying, and under each image, numbers. 1971 to 1983, 1971 to 1979, 1971 to 1981, 1971 to 1977, and a single word, deceased. Then a whisper. William Hardwick, Glenn Burke, Tom Parnell, Carl Bader. It's Maxwell Lord, standing in the center of this room, looking at these faces, naming their names. He's no longer smiling and gregarious, dark now, and sad. He latches on to one face, Jonah Wilkes, and places his fingertips against the screen. He looks into this 12-year-old's videotaped face. Are we ready, Jonah? The little boy's smiling, bright, hopeful eyes. Barry and Iris Allen are in their home, a simple, unassuming house in a rundown blue-collar neighborhood, tucked between warehouses, a scrappy postage stamp front yard. Barry, back in his cop's blue suit, walks through the house to the kitchen, where he finds Iris, reading a magazine, leaning on the counter. Honey, I am so sorry. How dare you go out and save the world? Barry, I knew what I was getting when I married you. She gives him a kiss. He holds on for a second. So, guess who I met today? Superman. The guy is amazing, real classy. And you know the Martian Manhunter? Big green guy, works out west. Iris gives him a penetrating look. And? Anyone else? Oh, yeah. I guess Wonder Woman was there. Barely noticed. Mm-hmm. So? She's fine, I guess. If you like women with muscles and magical lassos. Shut it. <laughs> she laughs, kisses him again. Anything to eat? Starving. Barry crosses to two industrial-sized fridges, throws open both sets of doors. At super speed, he pulls out enough food for ten, starts prepping, making an unholy mess. Barry, I just cleaned up. She throws a radish at him. He flicks his wrist, catching it easily. Puts it in his sandwich. Out. Go play with Wally. Wally's here already? Time moves fast these days. The Allen's garage is converted into a den. A ping pong table in the center. Barry stops, smiles. A ping pong ball is bouncing across the net. Back, forth, back, forth, over and over and over. By itself. Barry reaches out and grabs at the air. Comes up with a hand, attached to an arm, attached to a 17-year-old kid. Wally West. Barry's nephew. Oh! Hey, Uncle Barry. Barry pinches Wally's cheek like he's a little kid, which would be irritating even if he wasn't 17. Now, Wally, did you go and get faster since last summer? I think you did. Wally swats him away. You want a game? Heck yes. I'll kick your creaky B-U double T. You can K-I-double-S my B-U double T is what you can do. Game on. Paddles up. The serve. And they can't help themselves. Faster and faster and faster, until you can't see the ball anymore. Just the click thwack of a ball on paddle. Two sets of hands in a blur. Then Wally tosses in another ball. Then so does Barry. Three balls, then four, five, all pinging and pogging over the net. Barry is smiling, having fun. Through the door, in the kitchen, Iris smiles and shakes her head. Boys will be boys. Flash stands up, hands on hips. Clearly, his nephew kicked his B-U double T. So, ping pong's not your game. Flash shoots him a look of mock annoyance. Next time, hotshot. Listen, I need you to do something for me. You're good with computers, right? I know my way around. I need you to do some research. Dig up whatever you can on nanotechnology. I want to know who's into it. Companies, people, military, civilian. Cutting edge. The secret stuff. You'll have to dig deep. I'm on it. 100%. This is just us, okay? I don't want Aunt Iris worrying. 
Wally nods. Lips are sealed. And make it quick, will ya? Hey, quick is how we roll. They both smile. Two guys cut from the same cloth. Nighttime on the Aegean Sea. Off the coast of Santorini, Superman hits the water like a bullet. Underwater, submerged volcanic rock. Breathtaking sea caves. Superman kicks his way through phosphorescent kelp forests to Poseidonus. At the bottom of a deep sea trench, shimmering with the glow of anglerfish and gigantic sea jellies. Superman bullets for Arthur's palace. Towering, otherworldly, awe-inspiring. Through the massive coral gates and into the great hall, and there, seated on his throne, Aquaman. He looks up, granite jaw, fierce eyes. What is it this time? Inside the Batcave, Batman's got multiple views on his brother eye screen. Aquaman and Superman in Poseidonus, Wonder Woman and John Johns in New York. He leans in. Alfred stands behind him. Fire. It took me years to uncover his weakness. Could someone else be watching? Maybe. Maybe. But who? In Maxwell Lord's control room, another screen is monitoring Batman, deep in his bat cave. Great minds think alike, Bruce. Maxwell Lord sits in front of his own jumbo screen, watching, just like Batman. Today, the look in his eyes, he wanted you so bad I could taste it. In the control room with Max, it's Talia, her gaze on the screen, steely. Did we make him sweat? Whatever that was, whatever you were pulling, stupid Maxwell, we could have been exposed. You give him too much credit. I give him nothing. Trust me, Talia. There's no way he could see what's coming. He types the words on the screen. Phase one, initiate. There's no way. It's nighttime in the downtown Gotham streets. The high whine of a motorcycle engine. A Kawasaki ZX at mad speed. A little gritty biker tails two motorcycle cops. He blows right between them, pops a wheelie, flips them off, guns away. The cops hit their sirens. They chase the runty biker down a deserted back street. Suddenly they're surrounded, a whole motorcycle gang, on massive choppers. The first cop goes for his radio, not a good idea. The gang leader, huge, dwarfing his bike, grabs the cop's arms, twists him right off his bike. The cop tumbles. Another biker clamps a hook onto the collar of the second cop's jacket. He looks back. The other end's attached to a cinder block, which a third biker calmly drops. The cop is off his bike and down. On a Gotham skyscraper, perched against the black Gotham sky, Batman. World peace. Why can't Gotham get the message? Batman leans forward and drops silently out of sight. Down on the Gotham streets, the motorcycle gang drags the cops along the street behind them. Grins and gunning engines. They don't see Batman. On the railing of an overpass, waiting. As they approach, he swings down on the grappling line. Boots first. He takes out two bikers, sending them sprawling. He lands in a crouch, pulls two batons and drives them into the spokes of the next two bikes. They careen into the air. Batman pulls the first cop to safety, comes up to see the last three bikers, all holding big guns. He pulls his cape around him as they open fire, round after round after round, hot metal hailstorm, until the guns are empty, but they're not done. The gang leader lifts a grenade launcher. Direct hit. The explosion drives Batman back. 30 feet of air. He lands, rolls, and is up. Relentless. Batman looks at his cape. Hundreds of bullets embedded in the matte black surface. This was a brand new cape. He goes to the utility belt. Pulls two batterings. Two more bikers drop, leaving just the gang leader. Huge and snarling. Batman strides calmly forward. The leader picks up his dropped chopper, heaves it overhead, ready to hurl hundreds of pounds of metal right on top of Batman. A hook line from Batman's grappling gun loops a street lamp, swings back and connects with the chopper's chassis, just as the gang leader heaves the bike. The cable pulleys Batman up and out of the way. He swings on the end of the line and a punch-kick combination spins the monster biker right into the path of his own bike. Sirens. Batman looks around, an easy night's work. Until the whine of the Kawasaki engine, the runt, 
making a run for it. Batman fires his grapple line, yanks the little bike out from under him. The run tumbles, gets up and takes off on foot, disappears around a corner. Inside Aquaman's throne room, Superman stands before the king of the seven seas. You dare to come here and accuse me? No, Aquaman. I came here to... Aquaman's in no mood. Maybe he never is. Don't call me that, Aquaman. The air breather's name. It's demeaning, juvenile. I mean, Superman? Wonder Woman? Who comes up with these? King Arthur, then. I know how you feel about our planet's land, Willard. Our planet? Our planet? Last I checked, I control three quarters of the Earth's surface. This is my planet. And they treat it like it's a toilet. They aren't perfect, Arthur. Yes, they... Time and again, I have risen to their defense, and this... He flexes his left hand. It's unusual. Prosthetic. Made completely of water. This is what I got in return. A permanent reminder of their cruelty. I have given my pound of flesh, Superman. They're your problem, not mine. Respectfully, your highness, this isn't about them. Aquaman stews, tenses, then nods tersely. The Martian. Bring him to me. I'll see what I see. I'm asking you to come up, Arthur. We're asking. The princess. Superman nods. Aquaman doesn't like it, but... For her. Outside the Gotham movie theater, the runt biker had a dead run. He slams through the doors of an old movie palace. Batman gaining on him. Inside the movie theater, the runt dives over the candy counter. Ducks down, cowers, pants. A black gloved hand reaches over and yanks him up by the shirt. He's face to face with the Batman. The runt wriggles and slips right out of his shirt, dashes into the nearest theater where a movie plays to a half packed audience. Batman is almost invisible as he tails the runt down a side aisle to a dark corridor behind the screen. Flickering light from the movie, the runt scrambles over boxes, throwing them into Batman's path. He disappears into darkness. Batman scans. His bat ear picks up jagged breathing. Scared, strangled breathing. Whimpers, then... Oh no! No, please! A sudden series of mechanical clicks. Whirs. Metal on metal. And from out of the darkness, behind the boxes, an orb of glowing red light. Batman narrows his eyes when... A hunk of metal slams into Batman. Hard. Airborne, he crashes to the floor. As he shakes it off, he hears... Omac Alpha activated. Target acquired. Attack mode initiated. His head snaps up and he comes face to face with... Omac Alpha. Gleaming, metallic, blue steel. A single glowing red eye in the center of its forehead. But it's a quick look because... A burst of laser energy guns out of its eye. Batman dives and rolls as a stack of boxes vaporizes. He's back up with a handful of bat grenades. He delivers. Five contact grenades stick to the Omax steel shell, and Batman covers with his cape as... The explosion shreds the screen. The audience screams. Popcorn flies. The chandelier sways. The heavy smoke clears and... Omax Alpha, not a dent on it. The machine grips Batman in its massive claws, lifts him overhead, tosses him through the tattered screen into the audience. He wipes out a row of seats. The crowd starts to panic. They scramble. As the Omac begins a slow rise out of the movie screen, Batman fires the grappling line up to the balcony. Zips up, but the Omac is fast. Too fast. It flies right at him, catches him by the throat, drives him against the wall. It clamps onto his neck, squeezes. Batman struggles, beating against the metal uselessly. From out of the steel arm, a pincer emerges. Metal prods grip the edge of Batman's mask, peeling it back to reveal Bruce Wayne, the man behind the mask, exposed, with its cold, computerized voice. Target neutralized. Terminate. The one glowing red eye sends the image of the helpless Batman to Maxwell Lord's control room. Maxwell Lord sits at his monitor, staring into Batman's face, 30 feet high, into his eyes. Target neutralized. Terminate. The machine waits for the command to kill. Stop it, Max. Our deal was not for a death sentence. 
No, no, no. I wouldn't do that. On screen, Batman struggling less and less, on the verge of losing consciousness. Terminate. Max! I just wanted you to see how easy it is to take everything from him. His most precious secret. Revealed. So easy. Test complete. Disengage. Reconfigure. And Batman drops out of view onto the floor of the balcony, eyes wide open. What was that? Down on the floor of the movie theater, the hysterical crowd races out of the lobby. As the OMAC hovers into view, it begins to lurch, to list. It starts to come apart, chunks of it dropping to the ground, disintegrating, revealing the runt, cocooned inside. As the last of the OMAC falls from his body, he staggers out, dazed, bewildered. Nighttime on the ocean. The massive white moon sits on top of the Atlantic. Superman blasts out of the water, with Aquaman riding the backs of a pair of bottlenose dolphins, harnessed like racehorses, right behind him. In Wonder Woman's conservatory, Aquaman examines Jean. Finding nothing, he climbs out of the pool and is instantly dry. Preposterous. A sea creature spitting fire? Not fire. A substance. A fluid. And it what? Put itself in a jar? Just waiting to attack? It's ridiculous, this whole thing. Arthur, please. No one is accusing your subjects. We thought you might shed some light. Aquaman nods, pacified by the princess. Nods to Jean. I'm sorry. Being upworld makes me edgy. The flash materializes, vibrating right through the door, already talking. So I was thinking, if I'm right and we are dealing with a nanotech attack, how did... He stops. Notices Aquaman, impressed all over again. Hey, wow, Aquaman. You're Aquaman. Flesh, please. Not Aquaman. It's King Arthur among us. Sorry, your highness. I'm Flash. Flash holds out his hand, and Aquaman takes it, looking to Superman. He's dismissive. You can call me the Scarlet Speedster. Some do. Inside the Batcave, Batman with his shattered cow pulled back, his suit peeled around his waist, his left shoulder heavily bandaged, watching the replay of his fight. Brother I, review from 1023. Reviewing 1023. The image resets. It's grainy and dim, hard to see. On the monitor, the OMAC coming apart, falling into scrap and ash. The runt biker emerging, disoriented. Freeze. Enhance. The Brother I camera zooms in, frame by frame. Batman leans forward, trying to make sense of what he's seeing. What is that? Brother I, go to audio 946, enhance. 946, enhancing audio. And then, clear as a bell. OMAC Alpha activated. Target acquired. Attack mode initiated. Hold. OMAC Alpha. OMAC. The frozen image. The killer machine staring down at Batman with its single glowing eye. Switch command. Access references to OMAC or OMAC Alpha. Files related to OMAC. Any... The screen goes black. Then just a red, eye-shaped icon. Right in the center. Access denied. What? Access to OMAC files denied. Says who? OMAC files denied to unauthorized access. Unauthorized? Reset to default settings. Access OMAC files. Access denied. Batman goes to the keyboard, furiously typing in code. Shut down reboot command denied. There is no fault in the system, creator. No fault in the system. Stand by. The screen suddenly goes into digital hyperdrive. It blinks and flashes. Millions of lines of code whiz by. It crashes, then blinks back on. With a message, a threat, a disaster. Five words. Five words towering over Batman. You don't control it anymore. Batman sits heavily into his seat. Nighttime on the Empire State Building. Lights on in offices all the way up to the 49th floor to Stewart & Associates' architectural firm, where the owner, John Stewart, is locking the front door. He makes his way through the deserted offices, past drafting tables and scale models of impressive projects, to the corner office. He locks this door, too, from the inside. John presses a remote button, and industrial metal shutters drop down over the windows, the door locked down tight. 
he pulls a gold chain from under his collar, tugs it off his neck. As he coils it into his palm, it transforms into the Green Lantern power ring. He slips it on his finger, then clenches his fist and a cavity in space-time opens before him and inside, a large Green Lantern glows, the Owen power battery. He puts his fist against it, whispers, In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. The ring begins to glow, its energy streaking up his arm, his chest, his whole body. And there he is, the Green Lantern. Black and green, hardened muscles, pure power. He leans over a set of plans, architectural drawings of a playground marked How Jordan Memorial Park. He narrows his eyes, projecting his imagination through the ring, and the drawing becomes three-dimensional, rising from the page. He studies it. The swings begin to move, the seesaw up and down. Then a child appears, two inches tall, green, laughing. Then another and another. Virtual playtime. Green Lantern smiles. Inside Wonder Woman's conservatory, a mosquito hovers high above the pool. Below, four superheroes are standing, Sean floating. Diana, I've got to get back. I've been dry too long. But this is no ordinary bug. It's metallic, man-made, a mosquito bot. A faint mechanical buzz as the bug bot drops down and down. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. I appreciate the attempt. Thank you. They clasp forearms, like warriors do. Flash notices Aquaman's hand, his left hand. Whoa, is that water? You've got a hand made out of water? Can I touch it? <sighs> Aquaman sighs, holds out his hand, and Flash shakes it. Wow, it feels like a, a damp hand. What does it do? Anything cool? It's a hand. The faint buzzing again as the bug lands on Aquaman's exposed neck. Its metal stinger extends and it jabs its needle nose deep into Aquaman's skin. Uh. Aquaman crushes it with a slap to his neck. He flicks the bloodsucker away in disgust. Dirty air-breathing bug. But he's too late. Something's inside. In Jon Stewart's office, Green Lantern watches his creations play. One of the little green kids reaches for the monkey bars can't reach. Green Lantern adjusts them down a few inches, and she jumps on easily. He leans over his plans, erases, makes the correction with his drafting pencil, then sticks it in his mouth and chews on the end of it. He recoils. Something tastes funny. And when he pulls the pencil out, his whole tongue has turned black, and it's spreading to his throat. And now his eyes, darting, twitching, so fast they blur into a smear of black and brown. And now an intense white noise erupts in his ears, searing his brain. As he grabs the sides of his head, the playground distorts, turning wild. No longer children play, grotesque green shapes grow and grow, filling the room, smashing everything in sight. And Green Lantern's eyes writhe in their sockets as, inside Wonder Woman's conservatory, Aquaman's eyes stare wide open. Something's not right. Hey, your majesty? Why don't you take Mr. Johns back to your place? It's got to be sitting in the shallow end. His eyes, growing wider and wider, darting. Hey, you okay? You don't look so good. Aquaman backs away from the edge of the pool, staring into the water, cold sweat dripping. Arthur, what is it? It's fear. Water. The water. He waves his arms in front of him like he's trying to dispel a vision of something horrible. His eyes lock onto his hand, his left hand, the hand that's made of water. He claws at it, pulls at it, and removes it, throws it, sliding across the floor. Terrified, he backs away against the wall, crumples to the floor. John, get inside his head. John closes his red eyes, concentrates. It's difficult. I see. Aquaman squeezes his eyes shut, whimpers. Wonder Woman kneels by his side. Fear. So much fear. It's water. He's afraid of the water? Terrified. Can't be good for a fish. Wonder Woman picks him up easily in her arms, like a scared kid. Carries him into an adjacent chamber, away from the water. 
His breath comes in jagged bursts. She kneels by his side. Easy, Arthur. Aquaman holds on to Wonder Woman, gasping for air. Diana, my hand. The Martian, take it. Have him touch it. It, it, it may help. She nods and heads for Aquaman's enchanted water hand, lying discarded on the tiled floor. Wonder Woman picks it up gingerly. It's limp, lifeless, an awful lot like a severed hand. Now that's creepy. She crosses to the pool, kneels, holding out the hand. Jean reaches for the surface, a little fearful. His fingertips start to smoke. He lunges for the aqua hand, and as soon as he touches it, it covers his own hand in a layer of water, a barrier between his skin and the air. He was in the pool with Jean, right? Maybe he's reacted to something in the water, something Martian-y? Jean slowly emerges from the pool, his body enveloped in a rippling liquid. The fire's out. He's safe. Marshy. They head for the antechamber, where Aquaman languishes. No, these are directed attacks. Specific. Designed. How long can he stay dry without, you know, turning into bait? I am in the room, you know. He coughs. Not sounding good. Jean's staying focused. We need to be thinking of a single source. Someone who... But Jean is suddenly distracted. He takes a step back like he's been punched. What, John? What is it? Can you hear it, Cal? Some... a strong soul. Anguish. Something. Jean looks around for the source. Out the window. There. He points. Across the skyline to the 49th floor of the Empire State Building. Tendrils of green light shoot out of the windows. Wrap the building. Recede. Frenzied. Green Lantern. Without a second thought, he flies out the window. Gone. Wait up! The flash speeds after him. In the Batcave, the single word blinks over the brother eye screen. Watch. Multiple images. Aquaman prone, trembling in Wonder Woman's arms. Jean Jean's encased in his cocoon. The Empire State Building with its pulsing green light. Batman's eyes are intense. He keys the console microphone. Alfred, I need the backup computers now. Yes, sir. Which ones? All of them. He jabs the button, sinks back. Oh, Mac. Who are you? Inside Maxwell Lord's archive chamber, Maxwell is in his sanctum. The walls of TV screens. On every one, the same little boy. How am I doing, Jonah? Hundreds of Jonah Wilkes smile down on him. Approval. In Wonder Woman's conservatory, Green Lantern's eyes are opaque. Darting around in their sockets, six heroes now. Most have seen better days. I can't see. I can't see. And in the inside, my head, it's noise. Like a scream. I can't hold anything. I can't concentrate. I can't see. He drops his head into his hands. There's got to be a thread. Something tying the attacks together. Not geography. Not methodology. The effects are various. Fear. Could it be the Scarecrow out of Gotham? He's locked away. Arkham Asylum. Are we sure? I'll check. Flash is suddenly a streak of red. Gone. What about the Penguin? Arkham. Mr. Freeze? In the slab, the Joker? Arkham too, along with the Penguin. Solomon Grundy. Could it be Lex? I put him in Striker Island myself. Poison Ivy. Parasite. What about Dr. Psycho or Murmur? Flash is back. Nope. Both in the slab. Arkham, Strikers, everyone's accounted for. They're all locked down. Someone new then. Someone smart. We need to think defensive. Who's next? Anyone know uh, about the Batman? No, no, no. He won't be a target. They're attacking superheroes, and he's not... The others all look at him. Well, yeah, sure, he's a hero in the sense that he's heroic, but he's not super, per se. You know, I mean, he doesn't have any powers or anything like we do. He's just a human with a grudge. He's alone on this one. Okay, I'll shut up now. Think beside him for small miracles. In the Batcave, Batman and Alfred power up dozens of computers, row after row. Behind them, Brother Eye continues to monitor. It's attacking at their strengths. Fire, water, willpower. Turning them in on themselves. Just like... He doesn't finish. Alfred does it for him. Just like you would have. If, Alfred... Only ever if. Shouldn't you contact Superman? The others? Not until I find Omak. 
I started this. I'm going to stop it. He starts working the keyboards. In Wonder Woman's conservatory, three damaged heroes, three others feeling the threat. I feel like I've got a target painted on my back. We should assume any of us is vulnerable anywhere. Not anywhere. Wonder Woman instantly knows what he means. The fortress. We'll be safe there. The Fortress of Solitude? We're going to the Fortress of Solitude? I've never taken anyone. No one knows. Cal, you don't have to say it. Your trust is your safety. On each face is the implicit acknowledgement that his secrets are safe. Flash is stoked, under his breath. Oh man, the Fortress of frickin' Solitude. I gotta tell Iris. In Barry and Iris Allen's house, in a guest room, Wally West sits in front of his computer. On assignment, his fingers are a blur on the keyboard. The images on the screen were by so fast, they're barely visible, giving new meaning to the term, computer ways. Flash steps in. You still up? You told me to hack into all these systems, which, by the way, highly illegal and something grown-ups really should discourage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, any luck yet? Firewalls all over the place. Nothing I can't handle. He's working and talking. Files open and close at near light speed. I found some old DOD and CIA files on something called the OMAC project. Might be promising. I'm cycling through passcodes now. Keep looking. And fast. Trouble? Yeah. Wally vibrates into the speed force. Disappears. The clothes in his suitcase fly into the air. And before they can land, he's standing there in his own uniform. A flash knockoff. A little baggy. Need some help? No, Wally. No. I don't want you in the suit, not for any reason, okay? Wally hears Flash's tone. Get some coffee. Keep working. Let me know as soon as you find anything. Flash starts out. Where are you going? Keep a secret. Fortress of Solitude. No way. Oh, yeah. And Wally? I mean it about the suit. Wally nods. Got it. The Flash steps quietly into his and Iris' bedroom. Iris has the covers pulled up, sleeping beautifully. He sits on the edge of the bed. She opens her eyes. Barry? Shh, don't wake up. She smiles. Too late. Where are you going? Nowhere. Just a little situation. Nothing to worry about. We've got it totally under control. Who's, who's we? Everyone. Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern. You'd like him. Everybody. Iris sits up in bed. That's a lot of firepower. I should be worried, right? No. Come on, baby, I'm the Flash. What could possibly go- No, you're Barry Allen. My husband. I know. And I love you. He gives her a kiss. A nice, long, in-love-for-years kiss. Then he pulls away and looks into her eyes. Then a final kiss on her neck. And he rolls out of bed. Wait. Take this. She hands him her cell phone from the bedside table. Iris, come on. I don't have any pockets. It'll be all bulky. Just take it. Makes me feel like I can find you. Wherever. He nods. If it'll make her feel safe. Don't do anything stupid. You can't save the whole world, you know? Not the whole world. Just the little part with you in it. He blows her a farewell kiss and... Gone. Over Greenland, a snow goose, its long neck straining in flight, then a second goose, and a third, and then tens and hundreds and thousands, a huge flock migrating south. And right in the middle, Superman, harnessed into Wonder Woman's lariat, towing Green Lantern on a green gliding wing, a hang glider, projected from his ring. Jean Jones is along for the ride. Wonder Woman flies behind, holding Aquaman in her arms. Aquaman looks down at the roiling sea, fear in his eyes. Hundreds of feet below them, on a craggy coast, a streak of red. The flash, tiny and distant, he waves his arms, then races ahead to the next peak. Superman banks and swoops down, collects Flash in his arms, and flies onward into the snow. Refugees. One day ago, inside the Fortress of Solitude, the safest place on Earth. With Superman leading the way, they walk down a long, domed ice tunnel. 
Wonder Woman supports Aquaman. Jean leads the all-but-blind Green Lantern. When they reach the end of the tunnel, Flash's eyes open in absolute awe because they've entered the vast atrium. Holy... Hundreds and hundreds of feet high, the walls lined with colossal statues carved out of ice. Towering figures, Jor-El and Lara-El, Superman's parents, like the Mount Rushmore of Superman's lost world. Superman leads them to the edge of a great chasm, thousands of feet deep, below, on an ice shelf, at the feet of the statues. An exact replica of the Kent family farmhouse. Wooden clapboard walls, gabled roof, even down to the picket fence and hard scrabble front yard. His home. He lifts Aquaman and steps over the edge, descending gracefully into the family farm. Wow, he's homesick. Wonder Woman can't take her eyes off this surprising view inside Superman's soul. Flash looks to Wonder Woman. Aren't you cold? Deep in space, the Brother Eye satellite shifts manically, scanning the Earth, scanning, and... Multiple subjects acquire results. Negative. Scan. Inside Maxwell Lord's control room, on the monitor, code scrolls along the bottom of the screen. Images whir by. Brother Eye, scanning the globe, trying to find targets. Initiated conopt mode. Searching. Negative. Targets out of range. And there, at the control panel, Maxwell Lord. Where'd you go? Where are you? In the Batcave, on Batman's screen, Brother Eye scanning, scanning, but Batman's not watching. He's at the backup computers, working with Alfred, detective mode. Okay, where are we? OMAC stands for One Man Army Corps, Secret Defense Department program, World War II, a deployment of super soldiers able to take on a whole brigade of Nazis, alone. On one screen, a grainy photo, a G.I. encased in an armored bodysuit, primitive, cumbersome, like something out of an old 50s sci-fi flick. Problem is, it doesn't work, so we're here. 60s and 70s, they switched to psyops, mind control stuff. Lists of soldiers' names, deployments, all listed M.I.A., they send these guys into the jungle, but none of them come out. All MIA. So they go to robotics. Down the line of monitor screens. Other photos. Other eras. Schematics. Designs. Getting more and more advanced. Nanotechnologies. Autonomous systems. Then in 99, the whole program goes offline. Discontinued. Maybe. Maybe not. I recognize that one. On the last screen, the OMAC that attacked Batman... But what does OMAC have to do with Brother I? And why the attacks on the others? Before Alfred can answer, the Brother I image locks. The Arctic. The entrance to the Fortress of Solitude. Zooming. Multiple subjects acquire results. Positive. Scan. No. No, stay off the grid. Stay gone. Targets acquired. Multiple subjects. Superman. Active. Wonder Woman. Active. Blast! Keep digging. And he's already up and moving. Pushes a button. The roar of a jet engine from deep in the bat cave. And he's running. Across the Gotham skyline, a streak of graphite black. And a sonic boom as Batman banks his bat plane into the late afternoon sun. Inside the farmhouse at the Fortress of Solitude, it's homey. A worn sofa, doilies, hook rugs, an upright piano. But right now it's a bunker. Aquaman lies on the couch, his head in Wonder Woman's lap labored breathing, his skin flaking in gray. Green Lantern rocks back and forth in a wingback chair. Jean touches his water cocoon. It ripples. Flash hugs himself against the cold, stamps his feet, rubs his hands, full of energy. Now this is nice. Not what I expected, you know, fortress of solitude and all that, but it's nice. Homey. I like it. You got anything to eat in the fridge? He doesn't answer. Preoccupied. No? Okay, that's that's okay. I'm, I'm fine. Hey, GL, how you doing? You okay? No. All right, got it. Everyone's all... You know, I'll shut up. Green Lantern shakes his head. No, keep talking. It helps. I need to admit it. Flash smiles, glad to be needed. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, here's a question for you, John. How's that thing work, your ring? 
I don't know. Don't really talk to me. What do you do? You point it at something and think really hard? Something like that. Trying to keep Green Lantern talking. Can I try it? It won't work for you. There's rules. It serves only the strongest will and the bravest heart. Is that right? So, so that's you on the whole planet? Out of six and a half billion people? Wow. That's impressive. So how'd it find you? Just unlucky, I guess. What, you don't like it? Because I love being fast. It's, it's like... Flash's energy is infectious. I, I don't know. When I'm really cooking as fast as I can, it's almost... It's like everything in the universe just stops. Hangs there. It's, it's like a stillness. No wind, no noise. Right there in that little space between beats of the human heart. It's... it's peace. The others are listening, picturing, feeling this small moment of grace. That's impressive, too. That moment. Is that the speed of light? No, no, I I can't go that fast. At least, I don't think I can. Maybe. I've gotten close, but the speed barrier? I get this feeling it's one way. Once you cross... Flash sees the other's attention and likes it. Hey, Diana, can I try your lasso? Superman is suddenly alert, listening. Someone's coming. He looks skyward, X-raying through the earth. He sees, walking alone through the ice tunnel. The Batman. Vivid, stark and black against the white, white walls. Inside Maxwell Lord's control room, the brother eye cam watches Batman. This is dangerous, Maxwell. All together in one place. What if they prepare themselves, join together? Would it be arrogance to say that even if they do, they can't stop me? It would, probably. One man against these... gods. To Brother Eye. Brother Eye, access profile. Target the Flash. On screen, Flash's secret profile. Scanning down the data to the subfile titled Associates, he focuses on two words. Iris Allen. And through his smile... Let's see what one man can do. Back inside the Fortress of Solitude, Batman covering his injuries with his cape. Six pairs of eyes on him like lasers. You're not safe here. How did you find us? Not here, not anywhere. They wait for an explanation. Someone's watching you. Us. Right now. Impossible. No one on Earth- I found you. Didn't I? A simple truth, but a big one. Who? How? A satellite system. Semi-autonomous. It's tracking you. Hunting you. It knows your identities, your weaknesses, how to hit you, where to hit you, everything. Who is it? LexCorp? Someone at LexCorp? No. CIA. NSA. Rogue military. They're thinking fast, talking fast. No. Who then? There's someone we're missing. Someone we're not thinking of. Then? Me. And everything comes to a halt. Everything that's happened, it's all me. What are you saying? They look at him for an explanation. The system, it's mine. I built it. I deployed it. Brother, I. It sits there like a stone, quiet. Then, the question. Why? Why would you do that? She looks into Batman's face, into his steely eyes. What if? What if? What if you turned against us, against the world? What if someone controlled you, changed you? Preposterous. Is it? But you know us. You know we I would know never... what you're capable of. I know how powerful you are. And I know that no one on Earth, no mortal, could ever control you. If they advance on him... You wanted to control to us? To contain you, if necessary. We're not your enemies. Correct. And I didn't attack you. He's surrounded by these powerhouses. Someone got in, stole your eye? Yes. They're using... Your files, your database. Yes. Who? I don't know. Who is it? Who? I don't know. Aquaman dives at Batman, furious. They did this? Turned me into this? His skin's gray, his eyes cloudy. And he's weak, running out of time. Superman steps in front of Batman. Swallowing his anger, he tries to stay calm. How do we turn it off? I don't know. I tried. Where is this thing? I don't know. Tell us! I don't know. I cloaked it. Hit its location, even from myself. It's gone. It's Superman's turn to lose it. He lifts Batman off his feet and slams him against the wall. How could you be so stupid? 
I thought you were non-violent. A fist attached to a slim, powerful forearm connects viciously with Batman's jaw, sending him staggering out of Superman's grasp, down to one knee. He is, but I'm not. Did she hit him? Yeah, nice shot, too. Batman struggles to his feet. With major difficulty, the others get a good look at him. His left shoulder, his right knee, high-tech braces on both. Whatever happened to him, it was bad. Batman's reluctant, but he has to admit it. Everything. It's called OMAC. Some rotten visage of an old military program. Robotic attack vehicles, psyops, nanotech. I knew it! Someone hijacked it, updated it. There's a human component now, some sort of transformation. It hit me. Flashes of last night's battle in his head. One minute it was a man, and then it was a machine. A killing machine. I threw everything I had at it. Everything I had. It owned me. But it spared you? Why? That's what I need to find out. He draws his cape around himself again, ready to go. As soon as you can, split up. No. We're stronger together. You think we're here by accident? We're here because it wants us here. I think you're overestimating. Think about it, Clark. It used the attack on Jean as bait to bring Aquaman up to the surface. It hit me as a distraction. Then Green Lantern and Aquaman at the same time. It knew I'd come to warn you. It's been one step ahead the whole time. You're wrong, Bruce. We're safe here. We've already got John back on his feet. And in a fishbowl. Look at him. It's playing with us. How do you know all this? Because it's exactly how I would have done it. This stops them. He wears his guilt like a mask. Suddenly there's music. A ringtone. A hip-hop beat. The Flash remembers. Pulls Iris' cell phone from his boot. Oh, sorry, that's me. I got it. Don't answer that! He lifts the receiver to his ear. No, it's cool. It's my wife. Hey, honey. But it's not Iris. Through his ear, a microfiber tendril snakes out of the phone and slides right into his head. A metallic probe burrows deep inside his cranium, past and around the ear canal, down to the base of his skull. A nasty-looking, insect-like nanobot spits out. Eight legs snap open and latch onto Flash's spinal cord with a sickening crunch, and then it starts to vibrate. The Flash begins to vibrate along with the microscopic intruder. He drops the phone to the floor. Uh, this isn't going to be good. Flash? And the shakes kick in. Big time. He drops to his knees, looks up, pleading. Help? Hold him! Hold him! Full molecular speed, the threshold of the speed force. Wonder Woman reaches for him, but she's too late. He slips right through her arms and slides down into the icy floor, gone. Antarctica. A colony of emperor penguins panic, waddling madly away from the spot where the flash punches a hole into the surface of the ice, shooting out of the opposite side of the planet. He tumbles out into the sky above the South Pole, arms and legs flailing, totally out of control, thousands of feet up in the air until gravity pulls him straight back down. The ground screams up to meet him. This is gonna leave a mark. He hits the frozen tundra and disappears back into the earth, headed the other way through. Back in the Fortress of Solitude, on the spot in the floor where the Flash used to be. Green Lantern's in the dark. What happened? He'll pass through. Through what? The earth. Straight through and out the other side. At that speed, does he still have mass? Why? What goes up? must come down, and Flash blasts through the floor like a bolt of electricity, slicing right through the roof of the house. They're down the steps of the porch, all looking up at the ceiling of the cavern. How long can he keep it up? He'll stop at the center of gravity, the molten core. Wonder Woman's not going to let that happen. She goes to her belt, unhooks the lasso of truth, ties a loop. Will it hold? It was forged by the gods themselves. Tell me when. Superman trains his x-ray vision upward. Jean uses his Martian vision, getting a fix on the Flash's position. Wait for it. Wait. Closer and closer, picking up speed, Wonder Woman twirls the lasso overhead. Ready? Aim. Hephaestus, don't fail me. Now. And she fires. Skyward, just as Flash appears through the roof. The lasso meets him, looping around his chest. Bullseye. But he's falling too fast to stop on a dime. Back into the roof of the house, 
with the lasso of truth trailing behind him. The rope tears through the house, ripping a path through the roof, the front porch, the steps, the front path, the yard. As Wonder Woman slows his fall, the lariat slips through her hands, smoke curling up from her palms. Finally, her bald fists slam against the ground, holding firm. She's got him, one end in her hands, the other in the floor. Wonder Woman pulls hand over hand. Superman helps, the rope jittering. Finally, she yanks the flash out of the earth, head first, then shoulders, until he lies trembling on the floor of the fortress, wrecked. Was it his phone? An electromagnetic pulse. John's already scanning. No, I saw something enter his ear canal. There's something there. By the basal ganglia, Cal. Got it. Something nanoscopic, vibrating. The flash's jittering voice. I told you guys it was nanotech. Superman's scanning too. Jean scans Green Lantern with his vision. John, you have one too, behind your visual cortex. There are bugs in all of us? Cal, your heat vision! Burn them out! Too dangerous. Jean? I couldn't risk it. Risk it? My metabolism will eat me alive. He's right. He's already becoming skin and bones. Green Lantern's eyes are dancing. Uncertain. If I had my sight... I'll guide you in. Be your eyes. I'd need to make a surgical instrument. Microfibers. I don't know. Do it. Do it. He decides. Get him inside. Tie him down. Jean carries Flash into the house. Green Lantern follows, a hand on Jean's shoulder. Wonder Woman helps Aquaman in. Superman turns to see Batman, rising up his jump line, a black smear against the ice walls, headed for the surface. Batman crosses the ice to his bat plane, his injuries making him limp. Bruce! Batman stops in his tracks and turns as Superman approaches, face to face, chest to chest, the world's two most powerful men. I don't understand you, that you could do this, even contemplate this. I don't have time for your scorn, Clark. And you can save the lecture. Batman starts away again. The darkness in you, the paranoia, the rage, it's too much. Finally, this time, it's too much. It's in you too, Clark. It's in everything. You be the Boy Scout. Pretend everything's sunshine and light. But half of every day we live is lived at night. You've spent too many years in that cave. Maybe so. But if I didn't exist, and there was just you in the world, you'd have to invent me. Superman shakes his head. He's never going to get through. He leans in. The darkness. Such a lonely place to live. Now it's Superman's turn to walk away, leaving Batman alone in a swirl of wind and snow. Over this... In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. In the Fortress of Solitude, Green Lantern is trying to focus his mind, sweat beating, and four green microfibrous surgical probes with pincer ends are snaking out of his ring, right over Flash's face. He's harnessed in Wonder Woman's lasso, strapped to the kitchen table, cross-eyed, watching the probes approach his still vibrating head. Thinner, John. You've got to think thinner. Superman passes through into the farmhouse living room, where Wonder Woman holds Aquaman, pressing a wet towel to his forehead. She looks up. I can't rouse him. He's in a coma. If he'll stay out, maybe we can hybrid him. Superman races outside. In the kitchen... Easy. Easy. Green Lantern's probes enter Flash's brain. Through the nose, the ears, Jean Jeans guides him in with his Martian vision. Flash flinches, his eyes watering. I can't feel it. Another micrometer down. Good. Now just to the left. Your left or his left? Could be important. Outside, Superman's blasting the ice in the front yard with his heat vision, creating a pool of water, a pond, big enough and deep enough to hold a man. Back in the kitchen, full concentration on three faces. You'll feel the vibrations. It's all vibrations. You were right on it. I don't want to pull the wrong thing. The Flash mumbles a mantra. Strongest will, bravest heart. Strongest will, bravest heart. Now! Green Lantern retracts the probes, and he's got it. The little intruder. Flash instantly stops shaking. He settles, lies there panting. The others all lean in. Is he okay? His eyes flutter and open, his parched lips part, and... I love toast. Maybe not what they were expecting to hear. Pretty much any toast. 
rye, pumpernickel. I like the San Francisco style sourdough. Don't even start with the English muffin. Nature's perfect food. Oh man, I pulled out his brain. Wonder Woman steps in, carrying Aquaman in her arms. No, no, it's the lariat. It's making him tell the truth. Unwind him. She bangs out the door, headed for the yard. Flash keeps going. I'm not sure about the crumpet. I mean, is that even toast? Jean unwinds the rope, and Flash stops on a dime, manages to sit up. He looks around unsteady. Well, that was awful. Who's next? And he falls back onto the table, frail and skeletal. In the bat plane, Batman is at the controls of his supersonic jet. He keys his radio. Alfred. The response is instant. Yes, Master Bruce? I need you to try to access the Brother Eye system. It's dark, sir. Nothing. Keep trying. Let me know if you get back in. Back in the Fortress of Solitude, Wonder Woman wades in the water up to her waist. She releases Aquaman. He floats, lifeless, until his gills flutter open and hungrily drink in the water. This should keep him stable. If he wakes up, the shock could kill him. Jean scans Aquaman's brain for nanites. It's there, agitating the amygdala, the fear center. We imagine we'll have to go in. Superman scans the Martian. You're clean, John. I don't see anything in your brain. It must be external for me, bonded with my dogs. From the front porch, the Flash leans heavily against the railing, barely standing. You know what you need? A full body facial, like a scrub. Or no, like a laser dermabrasion. A little light cosmetic surgery, you know? Green Lantern's there, too. Good work. I'd have to remove the water shield. I don't know. I'm gonna get my little brain bug back to my lab. Break it down. Check its component parts. He sags onto the front steps, spent. You'll need your strength back first. I'll take you. Cal, Batman's eye. If it's up there, I'll find it. And tear it to pieces. There's a moment. Something happening here. A team forming. Working together. A moment acknowledged. Then, go. And they split up. Inside the Batcave, Alfred works on the computer. Brother I, respond. Respond. He waits. And waits. Then the screen blinks. A red icon. In the shape of a stylized eye. Blank pupil staring down. Batman's computerized voice. Respond affirmative. Alfred hits the mic on the console. Master Bruce, we're back online. Inside the cockpit of the bat plane. Patch me in. Go. Brother I, query. Is there a metahuman profile on Creator, on the Batman? Alfred sits under the big red eye. A tense pause as he waits for the machine to respond. Affirmative. Did you create a file on me, Alfred? Of course not. Well, whoever did, that's who's behind the attacks. That's OMAC. Access metahuman profiles. Subject, the Batman. Request affirmative. Accessing. In the Batcave. There it is. Batman's secret profile. Stats and data running the length of the screen. Age, height, weight, skills, strengths. It's all here. Access weakness subfile. Enhance. Batman's eyes are hidden behind his flight helmet visor. What does it say? Alfred, what does it say? It's just one word, sir. What is it? On the brother eye screen is one word. Looming, 30 feet high. Batman's weakness. Love. Batman is taking this in as images flash across his mirrored visor. A series of memories. A series of women. Seen in quick cuts. All in the arms of the Batman. All kissing him passionately. We see Julie Madison. Silver Saint Cloud. Vicky Vale. Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and finally, Talia, all reflected in Batman's eyes. Flash back to inside Talia's apartment, in her bedroom. Six months ago, Batman and Talia stand across the room from one another. She's powerful, sexual, he's wary, calm. Hello, beloved. She walks to him, slowly, in total control. I thought we already did this, for the last time and she's inches away from him. One kiss in payment for my father. I want one kiss. Then tell me you don't still love me. Her cat-like eyes search his. He resists her charms. I 
can't let you behind the mask, Talia. Never. What's behind the mask isn't what I want. She lowers her eyes suggestively. I want this. She takes one of his hands and pulls off his glove, Batman's skin white against the black. And this? The other glove. She raises his hands to her lips, kisses his palms with wet kisses, wraps his arms around her waist. And this? She places her hands on his chest, over his heart. Because I know it's mine. And Talia devours him, a kiss like an animal, a kiss almost brutal in its passion. Batman pulls away. His lips are bleeding. He licks the blood away, throws his cape around her body, enveloping her with his darkness. And as they fall back onto her bed, the kiss repeats itself. The image plays over and over, closer and closer, lips, teeth, blood, but then, almost unnoticed, a tiny glint of metal, a nanoscopic homing device, in the bead of blood, and Batman's tongue taking it inside his body. Back to present. Batman understands everything. He says one word. Talia. One word that says it all. The black bat plane banks sharply. A change in flight plan, blowing a hole in the clouds. In space, a satellite, black against the black of space, floating. A red, gold, and blue streak. Superman pulls up, inspects it, turns it in his hands, sees the symbol AT&T. Not the right one. Not Brother I. He streaks off to the next target, and the next. Inside the Planet Krypton restaurant, we pass a child's birthday party. Balloons, streamers, overweight dads in flash costumes, moms as Wonder Woman, which is why no one pays any attention to the real Flash and Wonder Woman at the corner booth. Their table is filled with food. Crypto burger platters, one after the other. Why here? Flash holds up one of the enormous burgers. Calories. Lots and lots of calories. Feeding his weakened, emaciated frame. Inside the farmhouse in the Fortress of Solitude, Aquaman is submerged in the ice pool. Mid-surgery, a web of green tendrils circles his head. The Martian is underwater with him. He's shapeshifted, and his four arms are immobilizing the patient. Aquaman starts to come to, his eyes filled with panic. He opens his mouth to scream just as Green Lantern retracts the surgical filaments. Success. Breathe. Breathe. Aquaman gulps in water, calms visibly, sinks, spent. Jean gives him a moment, then... Take your hand back, Arthur. He reaches for Aquaman, touches his arm, and his life-saving water skin recedes, transforms, coalesces back into Aquaman's hand. It's time to fight fire with fire. Are you ready, John? Green Lantern is at the edge of the pool. His eyes are closed, in pure concentration, in pure effort. He's projecting a large, concave disc from his ring, a reflective surface, a green mirror. Yeah, I think I got it. The Martian rises slowly out of the water, and almost instantly bursts into flame, through gritted teeth. Now! With his Martian vision, John fires a beam of pure energy right at Green Lantern. It hits the mirror, refracts, and millions of lasers shoot back at him. They blast into his body, blowing out the flames and leaving behind a hardened charcoal shell. Like the petrified man. A moment, and then the shell cracks and falls away, leaving the Martian Manhunter standing there, green, intact, and free. Now you, Green Lantern. I can't. My power of concentration, it's too... I can't go in on myself. Aquaman rises from the water, stands next to Jean. I think I can. He crosses to Green Lantern, puts a hand on his shoulder. Green Lantern's eyes whiz in their sockets. You'll have to trust me, John. He nods. Aquaman places his water hand over Green Lantern's face, gently. Breathe in. Green Lantern hesitates a beat then takes a big gulp of air and inhales Aquaman's water hand. It disappears into his lungs and starts to drown him. He gasps, can't breathe. He shudders, drops to his knees. He's drowning, trust me, John. 
Aquaman takes Green Lantern down onto his back. His body bucks, fighting for life. Then he stops, unconscious. As he lies there, water begins to pour out of his ears, a puddle. Aquaman reaches down, touches the water, and it becomes his hand again. His hand holding a tiny metallic bug in its fingers. Green Lantern's eyes snap open and he pulls in oxygen. His lungs are clear, his mind is clear, and his eyes... I can see. I can see. He looks up at Aquaman, kneeling over him. Thank you, Arthur. Aquaman shakes his head. Call me Aquaman. Back in New York, Talia pushes through the crowded rush hour sidewalks. She makes her way to the construction barricades outside Maxwell's building. She pushes through the plywood barrier, far up above, on a rooftop across the street. Batman watches her enter the exposed elevator and start for the top three floors. He fires a dart from his grappling gun, and as the jump line snakes across the street, Maxwell Lord, in his control room, viewing the Brother Ice screen. Batman's image is repeated there. So predictable. So predictable. What a nice reunion this will be. And then he steps away. Inside the Planet Krypton restaurant, the Flash is digging in, rejuvenating, regaining his strength. You, you want some? She shakes her head. Wonder Woman has to smile. He's feeling better. Flash wipes his chin with a napkin, hears... That junk will kill you, Uncle Barry. It's Wally West. He's got a folder of papers in his hand. I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? Is this a date? Seriously, is it? Because Aunt Iris... I'm just saying. Flash blushes, almost as red as his suit. It's not a date, for crying out What are you doing here? How'd you find us? Something in the Speed Force. I always know where you are. But just a sec. Oh, wow. You're Wonder Woman. The real Wonder Woman. Wally's eyes rolled down his shirt front. He smiles a crooked, late teenage smile. Wonder Woman looks to Flash. My nephew Wally, he's... you know. He is indeed. Wally... Look, what have you got? Wally drops his folder on the table, slips into the booth. Well, you wanted to know Nano. Who's who, right? Who isn't is the better question. Wayne Enterprises, Solitron, Ambicor, they're all into the little stuff, but... He grabs a french fry from Flash's plate. First of all, I gotta tell you, the government needs to get better encryption technology, because I was in there pretty deep, and I'm just a kid with an iPhone. But I turned up something interesting, part of this OMAC project. They both lean in. You guys are gonna love this. As he opens his folder, back to Maxwell Lord's penthouse. Batman is in Maxwell Lord's private residence. Three floors connected by grand stairways. Walls of windows, shades drawn. It's dark, lit by streaks of neon. Odd sculptures and objects jut out of the gloom, filled with Max's collection of expensive things, all in a jumble, like toys a kid's gotten tired of. Sports cars, Motorcycles, enormous TVs play grainy static. And from far above, up the central staircase, he hears, Wonder Woman, located, active. The Flash, located, active. Green Lantern, located, active. He moves quietly up into Maxwell Lord's control room. Talia is seated at the controls. Superman, located, active. A black, gloved hand rests on her shoulder. She doesn't turn around. She knows who it is instantly. She turns to him, bitterness in her eyes, passion. My beloved. He pulls her to her feet, close, almost an embrace. Betrayed by a kiss. I remember many kisses, Mr. Wayne. The kiss that revealed your secrets, that opened up your cave, that let me steal your little all-seeing eye. That was just the last kiss. You planted a tracking chip on me. Broke in, stole my surveillance. You are your father's daughter, after all. My father is dead. She slams her hands into his chest. Then, just like before, she places her palms over his heart. I said once that I wanted this. No. Now I want your identity, your reputation, everything you care about. The only things you care about. Why, Talia? Because you threw me away. My love, you made worthless my sacrifice. Because of me, you do this to them? 
he yanks her back to face the screen. With its split screen images of all the other heroes, he makes her look. He sees her falter, turn her eyes away, just for a moment. Wait. This isn't right. This isn't you. There's someone else. Don't underestimate me. The screen goes black. Then the red eye icon. OMAC Project Threat Level Elevated. Code Red. Stand by. OMAC Project. This can't be you. What is this? Initiate OMAC Protocols. Phase 1. Stand by. Talia! Who is OMAC? Inside the Planet Krypton restaurant, back at the table with Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Wally West, Wally has his folder open. Okay, so we know it's this one-man army corps thing. Highest grade nanotechnologies, robotics, all that stuff. But in the 70s, they took a spin through serious mind control. Check this out. He slides a stack of papers across the table. Names, hundreds and hundreds of names. Babies. Bunches of them. It became all about genetics. Chemical alterations, radiation, pharmaceuticals, who knows what. But they trained these kids from day one. Tried to raise a homegrown battalion of freaks. Supposed to be able to control the enemy just with the power of their minds, but... Down one column of the lists. Names, another column, birth dates, ID numbers, and a final column with one word repeated over and over down the page. Deceased. Cardiac arrest, hemorrhaging, organ failure. Mostly their brains turned to jelly. Oh my gosh. Humanity's capacity to inflict cruelty. A few years ago, the whole thing goes offline. The OMAC project just disappears. Wonder Woman scans the lists. And all these children? They all died? Yeah. He takes the list and turns to a center page. All except one. In the long line of deceased, there's a gap. One birth date that doesn't have a death date. The name is circled. A name we already know. Jonah Wilkes. Yeah. And it didn't ring a bell for me either, so... He drops the last of his research. Photos. The first shows a bunch of kids, lined up in rows. Faces we recognize from Maxwell's video archives. Next photo, the same group, only smaller. The next, even fewer kids. They're like class photos. Glad I missed that class. In each one, Wally has circled a single boy. Dark hair, penetrating eyes. Jonah Wilkes. Slightly crooked smile. I ran this kid's face through a forensic program to see what he'd look like today. Each sheet adding a few years. Jonah Wilkes growing older and older before our eyes, becoming more and more familiar. This guy look familiar to you? He lays the last photo next to a copy of Fortune magazine. The caption reading, Fortune's most fortunate son. Great Zeus! And the cover photo showing the smiling face of... Maxwell Lord. In his control room, Maxwell Lord steps out of the shadows. Hello, Bruce. He is now face to face with the Batman, cool as cool can be. He's flanked by three armed guards, guys we recognize, the bikers, the runt in the center. You. You're Omac. Yes, one man. The last of my kind, the sole survivor. He takes a step closer to Batman. Do you know your evolutionary theory, Bruce? I'm sure you must. Nature's relentless push towards perfection... What are you doing, Max? What I was born to do. I'm completing the OMAC project. He turns to the screen. Brother I, phase one. Command, go. OMAC project initiated. Phase one, go. You're gonna like this. And the monitor lights up with scenes from around the world. Capitals, seats of power, boardrooms, and in each one, transformations. Power players, people we recognize from Bruce Wayne's birthday, all becoming OMAX, one after the other. Recognize them, Bruce? Our friends! And now inside the House of Parliament in London, a right honorable gentleman transforms before our eyes. His body contorting as the OMAX shell encases him. He rises, hovers over the House of Commons. And now inside the Tokyo Stock Exchange, a Japanese floor trader contorts, rises, joined by another and another. The best the world has to offer. And now inside a corporate boardroom, a CEO Omen, humming and drifting over his conference table. The power players, the captains of finance, 
In the New York streets, a limo's windows shatter as a high-class home act grows in the rear seat. Military, media. Inside an aircraft carrier, first fleet, the bridge exploding onto the deck as sailors point and scream, nowhere to run. What once took millennia, I can now do in minutes, seconds. All skipped 10,000 generations to become. Chaos erupts all around the world. But inside Maxwell Lord's control room, perfected. All because I said it should be so. Look what one man can do. Batman looks to Talia, her eyes wide staring at the screen. I didn't know. It was Talia, Bruce, your weakness. Under all that black, it turns out you do have a heart. So with one kiss, she got her revenge and I got Brother Eye. Batman takes a step toward Max, and three high-powered semi-automatics are leveled at his chest. Rounds chambered, he stops. Really, I couldn't have done it without you. So you're what now, Max? God? No, no. These are the gods. Meta-human scan. All subjects. He points to the screen. Brother Eye switches to images of the other superheroes. At the Fortress of Solitude, Jean Jean's Green Lantern and Aquaman are recovering from their ordeal. The ones we worship and trust. Those who fell to Earth from other worlds. Those who rose from the seas. With their brave hearts and strong wills. At the MIR space station, Superman is still hunting satellites. And their absurd powers. Their absurd vows to protect and bring peace. In Planet Krypton, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Wally West all hunched over their papers, putting two and two together. But they're false gods, aren't they? Weak gods. Imperfect. We know that, Bruce, you and I. Because we know they can be beaten. How they can be beaten. By one man. You haven't beaten them, Max. Slowed them down, maybe, but they'll stop you. I'm betting they're going to want to save you first. From what? You? Activate Omac Beta. Target created. Max, no! Don't! Sequence initiated. Activate. Not from me. And before Batman's eyes, the runt biker transforms. His head snaps back as his body is taken over by the Omac, dormant within. The other bikers recoil in horror, and tendrils shoot out of this new Omac and enter the bodies of the other two, infecting them, and they transform too. From them. Three Omacs, hovering in midair right behind Maxwell Lord, glowing, humming, deadly. Happy birthday, Bruce. Inside the Fortress of Solitude, Detective John Jones, blue suit and tie, stands with Aquaman and Green Lantern in the middle of the ice cavern. What's he doing here? A beat, then? His face, his body, morphed back into their true form, Jean Jean's, getting his power back. Jean concentrates and his body is suddenly racked with pain. His head snaps back, and for just a second, he is Batman, in agony. He lets out a scream to match the scream coming from the inside of Maxwell Lord's control room, but Batman is in the grips of all three arms, pincers around his arms, his legs, his body, his ribs popping, his hour of anguish carries to outer space where Superman's head snaps to look down at the earth far below. He pinpoints the location and takes off, so fast space ripples behind him, the scream echoing to inside the fortress of solitude, where the distorted Batman reverts to Jean Jean's eyes wide. The Batman in torment. Lead us to him. I don't know if I can fly yet. You can and you will. We're back, Sean. No more fear. As they move, inside the control room, Batman is losing consciousness. The life squeezed out of him. Max, don't. This isn't what I wanted. Not what you wanted. Mm. The things we didn't want. You know what I didn't want? I didn't want to wake up every morning with my brains oozing out of my nose. But you're right. Command interrupt. Hold. Disengage. The Omac Betas stop, loosen their grips, and Batman drops to his knees, sucking in air through his teeth. What do you want? Well, I guess I'm a perfectionist at heart, Bruce. I want a world evolved. Evolved to a point where children don't lose their parents. Batman's hand inches toward his utility belt. Where friends don't die, no one's alone. Same as you, I suppose. We're not the same. 
His fingers slowly reach into a compartment. No. Who was it that spent hours and years figuring out how to kill all his friends? You or me? I'd never. Oh, come on, Bruce. You loaded the gun. I just pulled the trigger. Batman opens his hand, and a chaff bomb drops. It hits the floor, and the room fills with a confetti of metallic glitter, blinding the OMAC sensors. Re-engage! But they're lost in the chaff. Batman's first thought, Talia. He pulls her to a safe corner, then yanks two limpet grenades and makes a run for the computer, poised to take it out. But before he can set the charges, one of the OMAX clears, takes a swing with its deadly pincer. Batman dives clear, but the second OMAC is on him. It rams him into a wall with a sickening... Ugh. He lands next to a cowering Talia. Forgive me. The third OMAC lifts Batman by the throat and flings him across the room <laughs> into a steel pillar. Batman pulls himself up to one knee. Broken. No way to win this one. And all three OMACs get him at once. Pincers around his skull, his neck, his chest. Talia tries to pull him free. Max, you'll kill him! Oh no, Talia. I don't want to kill him. Until they come for him, I just want him to scream. Batman is sweating, gasping, his skull in the vice grip, grinding his teeth in a death grimace. He's not going to give in to Max, not going to scream again. A single drop of blood falls from the nose piece of his mask. Inside the Planet Krypton restaurant, three faces, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Wally West, three shocked faces, all turn toward the TVs above the bar, tuned in to a reporter at the U.S. Capitol. And there's a battle going on. Soldiers and cops trade fire with a dozen OMAX on the Capitol steps. Blasts of red energy beams explode, bodies thrown all over the place. Forces are pinned down here at the Capitol. No one seems to know what these things are or where they came from. A car is blown up into the air, careening right for the reporter, and the screen goes black. At the table... That doesn't look good. Suddenly, a voice... Diana, Flash, the Batman needs us. Now, Flash turns to Wonder Woman. Wally hasn't heard. It's the Martian. What? What's the Martian? Wonder Woman's already on the move. I'll go. Flash, find out what that's all about. What's happening? Where are you guys going? Stay. And he means it. Flash and Wonder Woman dash for the doors. Inside Maxwell Lord's control room, Batman's arms are twisted in their sockets. His mask is cracking and splintering. Stay away. Don't come. Would you come? Really, Bruce? After what you did to them all? Don't. Come. On the Arctic coastline, Aquaman is at a dead run, straight for the top of an ice cliff at the end of the world. He hits the edge and launches himself. He falls hundreds of feet straight down to the sea where a killer whale rises out of the water. Aquaman lands on its back, and the whale dies, taking him down. Inside the control room, Batman hangs limp as a ragdoll in the OMAX grip, barely conscious. What a shame. He was always going to be the easiest to take down. Max, you monster. You've got to admire him. Ah, oh, well. He goes to her, tries to lead her away from Batman. The costume. You should have it as a memento mori. The wall explodes in a shower of concrete and twisted rebar. Superman to the rescue. He charges into the Omax, catches one in the midsection, bending it double, lands a right hook on the second. A metallic ring, the Omax topples. Superman goes for Batman, crumbled on the floor. When a powerful pulse of energy shoots out of the third Omax eye, hits him in the back, drives him across the room, and the Omax swarm, all three hammering fists, clamping pincers, but he's unfazed. They're gnats to him. He carries them on his back, under the onslaught, kneels by Batman and checks for a pulse. His eyes flutter open. It's a trap. Stay away. In the Arctic tundra, a giant green fist punches a 20-foot wide hole in the tundra and the Martian Manhunter jets through. He hits the air at full speed, Green Lantern right behind. They're coming. Inside the control room, Superman shields Batman with his cape. He doesn't see the biggest Omac rearing back with two deadly steel blades. Behind you! The Omac Beta ready to plunge them in deep. A golden rope snakes across the room, wraps the Omac's raised arms. I've got his back! Wonder Woman, 
She plants her feet and yanks the Omac into the control panel. Sparks fly. It comes up firing. Energy bolts like a submachine gun. Wonder Woman deflects them with her bracelets. Right back into the body of the machine. Blown apart. The next Omac clamps a pincer on Wonder Woman. Wrong move. She grabs its massive arm and yanks. Clean out of its socket. She swings it like a baseball bat. Drives the Omac's head right off its shoulders. Well, that's a design flaw. The last Omac swings killer blades like buzz saws, but she strides right into the teeth of the thing. Unloads with a devastating roundhouse, a spin kick, a barrage of left hooks and clobbering right hands, a powerhouse. The Omac can't stand up to the beating. Down on one knee, it turns its eye up to face her and Wonder Woman cleans its clock. Barely out of breath, she turns on Maxwell Lord. Mr. Lord, your nose is bleeding. He pulls a handkerchief, dabs. Thank you. I'm afraid I'm prone. His smile is calm, controlled. Kremlin, the flash stands in the center of Red Square. In front of him, chaos. Omax in a firefight with Russian soldiers, people running and screaming. Here too? <sighs> and he's gone in a flash. Inside the control room, three heroes against one man, with his infuriating smile. Well, you certainly made that look easy. Turn it off. Now. Yeah, no. I don't think I could if I wanted to, frankly. We're a little past that point. More blood, dotting the cloth. We will stop you. Anything you throw at us, you know that. Don't you, Jonah? Max's smile vanishes. What? What did you just call me? Jonah. Jonah Wilkes, isn't it? He's suddenly angry. No. Not Jonah. You don't use that name. You don't have the right to use that name. Jonah's dead. There's only Max. Maxwell Lords. One man. Me. His nose is pouring blood now. You don't. Nobody. His anger goes as quickly as it came. He blinks. Then... Wait. 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 No, it's, it's okay. I'm in. I'm inside. I knew I could if I got him close enough. Yeah, I got him. It's okay. And now he's suddenly calm. The smile comes back. I'm in. And out of nowhere, ah! Wonder Woman is hit from behind. An annihilating blow. It smashes her face first into a wall, sinks her to her knees. She turns back to see Superman. Transformed, utterly, his face twisted, dark, eyes filled with rage. Clark, what are you doing? A war raging within the Man of Steel. Wonder Woman knows at once. The OMAC project. Mind control. I'm making him see what I want him to see. Know what I want him to know. Superman breathes like a bull. And right now he knows. He's just found out that Lois Lane, his one love, his only love, has been murdered. Tortured and murdered. Superman looms, advances, a monster, a killing machine. No, Max, no, it's too much! Stalking, closer and closer, Wonder Woman, his prey. And the best part? He rushes her, grabs her, lifts her over his head. He thinks you did it. And hurls her through the hole in the floor to the lower level, where she lands with a bone-crushing... Superman slowly descends through the hole, pure menace. Lifts his fist again, ready to drive it down, when a black shape lands on his back. Batman, two high-voltage electrical cables in hand. Legs locked around Superman, he jams the cables against his temples. 100,000 volts of electricity surge through Superman's brain. He bucks and bellows, eyes rolling white, and the lights flicker and go to black. When the power comes back up, Superman stands, the temples smoldering, face to face with Batman, dead eyes. It's not you I want. And he backhands Batman up and through the ceiling to the upper level. It's her! He turns, and Wonder Woman's right on top of him, arms outstretched. She slams her Amazonian bracelets against Superman's ears. The concussion sends a shockwave so strong it buckles support girders, tosses debris. A mini atom bomb. Superman grabs his ears in agony. Wonder Woman pounds a kick into his midsection. He buckles, flies backward across the room, skids to a stop. Cal! Fight it! It's not real! He doesn't hear, can't hear, 
a blast of heat vision, and another, and another. Wonder Woman dodges, gets behind him, and powers a kidney punch into his back. He drops to his knees. She loops her lasso, trying to tie him up, but he gets a hand in and grabs an end. Tethered, he whip slings her overhead and through the floor and down to the next lower level. Superman reels her in by her own rope, looks through the hole and Wonder Woman slings her tiara. It rips a slice out of his neck. He falls back, lets go, and the lasso retracts. Wonder Woman waits, ready for anything. Nothing comes. So she rises through the ceiling to the upper level and Superman hurls one of Max's trophies, a muscle car, right for her. Direct hit. It drives her back through the glass and steel wall and out over Lower Manhattan. And down, 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 hurtling to the crowded street below at 32.2 feet per second squared, Wonder Woman pulls herself free of the wrecked car, gets under it, and stops the fall just feet shy of the pavement. She uses it to shield pedestrians from the deadly debris. All safe, she drops the shell of the car and comes up with the engine block in her hand, screams up the side of the building, and slams the hundreds of pounds of metal into Superman's face, tossing him back up into the control room. Maxwell looks on, smiling, as Superman gets to his feet. He watches Wonder Woman ascend, the two most powerful beings in the world facing off in a death match. Amazing. And they're on again. They fly straight into one another, a colossal mid-air collision. Superman goes low and comes up under Wonder Woman. Hands around her neck, he blasts upward, right through the ceiling, driving her up and up and away. Talia is kneeling by Batman's lifeless body, helpless. Maxwell Lord has blood streaming down his face. How am I doing, Jonah? His lips curl in a vicious grin. Up in Earth's atmosphere, Superman's got Wonder Woman by the throat, driving her upwards. Their two faces are inches apart, his eyes glow red. Beams of hot energy shoot out, close range. Wonder Woman gets a bracelet up, blocks the blast. Deflecting it back into Superman's own face, he loses his grip. Wonder Woman's turn. She grabs Superman by the hair, heaves with everything she's got, flings him, spinning head over heels right into the moon. A crash landing in a cloud of moon rock and dust, wiping out the famous American flag planted there. Wonder Woman gazes at the moon, huge and distant. She knows he's coming. And he is. A speck growing bigger, fast, blazing right for her, silhouetted against the moon. She takes off in Superman's direction like a rocket, in a collision course. Two interstellar bodies ready for impact. At the last second, Wonder Woman veers upward, drops a loop of her lasso around Superman's neck, yanks him to a dead stop, throws coil after coil around his body, pins his arms. She pulls tighter and tighter, plants a knee in his back, bends him almost double, but it only enrages Superman. He works a hand free, grabs Wonder Woman's wrist, and squeezes. If we weren't in outer space, we'd hear her scream as the bones break. She lets the lasso slip, and Superman takes his shot, both fists, devastating. She jackknifes back in slow zero gravity rotations, unconscious. The lasso of truth trails out behind her, then suddenly goes taut. Superman has the other end. He swings her in circles faster and faster. She's a smear of color at the end of her own rope. When Superman lets go, it's not a free fall. It's not like a bullet. It's supersonic, like a meteor. Above lower Manhattan, the burn of re-entry turns Wonder Woman into a fireball streaking across the sky. Down, down, down and right into New York Harbor. Underwater at the murky bottom of the Hudson River, Wonder Woman lays lifeless in a deep crater. Silty water swirls around her. She's alone, helpless. Until a figure emerges from the darkness, green and gold. It's Aquaman. He creates an air bubble around her. He puts his lips to hers and breathes the breath of life forcing oxygen back into her battered lungs. Wonder Woman gasps for air, opens her eyes. Princess. One request. Anything. Slow Superman down. He nods, lifts his head, and emits a cry in a language of sonic waves. And his subjects respond. Perch, carp, barracuda, eels, river creatures of all descriptions emerge from the murk. As the air bubble dissipates, two dolphins curl in and carry Wonder Woman away, one under each arm, gone. Up in the sky, Superman plummets to Earth, 
following Wonder Woman into New York Harbor, slicing into the river, barely a ripple. Underwater, he lands in the crater at the bottom of the Hudson. His maddened eyes search for his prey. Instead, he finds walls of hostile sea creatures. They come at him like scaly bullets. He bats them away by the thousands. In the confusion of fish, he doesn't see Aquaman emerge, trident raised. He slashes three ugly tears across the S on Superman's chest. Superman glares at Aquaman, death in his eyes. Over the New York Harbor, the river explodes, sending Aquaman flying. Ruined trident still in hand, arms and legs spinning like mad, he slams into the Woolworth building and drops for the street below. Seconds before impact, a green net forms under him, catches him, and brings him safely down next to Green Lantern and John Jones. We need to find Diana. The Martian scans with his mind, locates her, points to the high rise on the riverbank. There. Wonder Woman is back inside the control room, burned and bleeding. Tiara gone, hair wet and wild, but she's back. Maxwell faces her, smiling. You were the only one I couldn't get to. Mind control. Such an insidious power. Not even Superman could take you out. Amazing. She goes to the lasso of truth, coils it around him, pulls him to her. Rough. She's calm, steely. Tell me how to turn this off. Oh, are we going to tell the truth now, Diana? How do I stop this? You want to know the truth? The truth is, you weren't there. None of you. Not one of you was there. Tell me! You weren't there for Tom, or Carl, or Glenn. Where were you for Billy? Darius? This ends now. They were children. And they were dying, and you weren't there. He's shouting, angry, hurt, right in her face. Jonah Wilkes! Jonah Wilkes needed you. Where were you? The whole building shakes, trembles, a wall crumbles, and there he stands, water steaming off his back. Superman. He flies straight for Wonder Woman when he slams into a green barrier. He's run smack into another Superman. Green, translucent, projected from Green Lantern's ring, an exact replica, with all the might of the original. With a fist like a 10 megaton bomb, the green Superman pounds Superman square in the jaw. Now over Manhattan, it's Superman versus Green Superman as they duke it out. Mid-air, fists flying like a super heavyweight title fight. Except, every time Superman slugs his mirror image, the Green Superman grows bigger and bigger until the gargantuan projection is big enough to grab Superman in its fist, the squeeze. Through the fingers, Superman sees Green Lantern standing on a ledge directing the attack. A blast of his super breath collapses the whole side of the building takes Green Lantern out under an avalanche of steel and glass. The green Superman vanishes as its creator blacks out. Inside the control room, Maxwell, still wrapped up, still fighting against the power of the lariat, she yanks the rope, pulls him to his knees. Enough! You're right. It is enough. Nobody likes a pity party. Blood drips from his nose onto his shirt. Here's the truth. There's only one way to stop this, princess. Kill me. He looks up at her with a sick grin, and Superman steps back in through the hole in the wall, eyes gone black, nothing left in them, nothing recognizably human. A guttural howl builds as he lumbers for her. Cal. Cal L. Superman stops, turns, and sees his mother, Lara L., beautiful, otherworldly. It's the only way to get me out of his mind to turn this off. You'll have to kill me. Superman's face softens. His mother moves around between him and Wonder Woman, holds her arms out. Kal-El, my son. He takes a step toward her. But you won't, will you? You won't because you made a vow, a solemn pledge never to kill, never to take a human life. Wonder Woman knows he's right. At war with herself, she pulls the lasso around his neck like a noose. You want to. You want to so bad I can smell it on you, like a perfume. Superman steps closer and closer, wanting the embrace of his mother, but his eyes turn blood red and he screams in pure rage. He charges Laura L with the full force of his wrath. A devastating blow sends her crumpled body skittering across the floor. She morphs into a wounded dog, then back into her real form. Jean Jean's collapsed. Maxwell is still in the noose eyes in Wonder Woman's face. You can't do it. 
she turns to see Superman blazing right for her. He hits her from behind, arms around her neck. He pulls her up and up, rising. She still holds the lasso, the other end around Maxwell's neck. It pulls tight. It would be so easy, just a gentle tug. You know you can't kill me. Maxwell's calm is unnerving, eerie. He knows she won't do it, and he's right. She lets the lasso slip through her fingers. It slackens, drops. Green Lantern, John Johns, Aquaman, all gaze up at Superman in terror. His teeth are bared, he's ready for the kill, and Wonder Woman is resigned to her death. Maxwell is triumphant. Where were you? Where were any of you when I needed you? A darkness envelops him from behind. A black cape, it engulfs him, and the last words Maxwell Lord hears on this earth are, Right here. Maxwell's neck breaks, like the sickening snapping of twigs, like knuckles popping. No! And he drops, dead, wrapped in the shroud of Batman's cape. The color returns to Superman's eyes. He relaxes his grip and Wonder Woman falls to the floor in a heap. Across from them, Batman pulls his cape off Max's dead body. He looks down on him. What one man can do, Max. Batman. No. No. She's wrecked, beaten, bleeding. Superman descends, confused and bleeding too. He sees Wonder Woman's crumpled form, tries to shake the dirt from his mind. Diana? What? He reaches for her, but she recoils in fear. She crawls away from him, over to Aquaman, Green Lantern, the Martian, all wounded, all damaged. Superman can't figure it out. He finds Maxwell's dead body. No. What is this? Who did this? I did. You did... what? What had to be done. Superman shakes the fog off, rises to his feet. This time, it's righteous anger. No. No! This isn't who we are. We never, never take a human life. It's unacceptable. Accept it. It's done. This makes you no better than him. Batman rushes Superman, gets in his face. You were killing her. Diana would be dead. This is a slap, a gut punch. What? Diana? Wonder Woman is still on the floor. Max was inside your mind. He turned you. You were... uh, uh. It was... inhuman. Superman sees the burn marks, the blood, the others, their injuries, knows it's true. All of it. Oh no. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He takes off his cape, wraps it around Wonder Woman. He touches Wonder Woman's face. Diana? She looks up at him, touches his wounds that she gave him, forgives him. It wasn't you, Cal. It wasn't you. Superman looks up at Batman, the truth rushing in. Then you were right. He lowers his head in shame. A beat, and then... It doesn't matter. It's over. But three words ring out in the silence. No, it's not. They all turn to the Brother Eye computer, and Talia... Beloved... Transforming, a network of cables enter her body, tendrils lifting her up, pulling her into the computer, suspending her, embedding her. Her body heaves and shakes as she changes, becoming metallic, robotic, not an OMAC, something else. She's become Brother Eye. And the voice that comes out is Maxwell Lord's. It's just 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 the beginning. The screen behind her flashes to people. Regular people, all over the world, in markets, restaurants, offices, all changing, morphing, rising, becoming OMAX. You see, what we've done, together, together, the the final final evolution, the the OMAX OMAX project project completed, the the relentless relentless pursuit pursuit of perfection. Wembley Stadium, London. A soccer midfielder transforms in front of 70,000 spectators. An inner city playground. A kid on a rusty swing. And it will be perfect. No more war. No No more conflict. No more more death. Venice Beach. A girl in a bikini playing volleyball. Everyone. Everywhere. Thinking with one mind. One great mind. A Japanese nightclub. The DJ spinning records. Mine. 
the control room. Scenes playing out on Brother Eye's screen. Master Lord has just come out of his shell. But now, Batman, you've given me immortality. The whole world. Omax everywhere. How? How's he doing it? How everywhere at once? Max's voice from the robotic Talia. How? You give them the one thing they all want. What everyone needs. Dinner. Batman starts to understand. The restaurants. Planet Krypton? It was in the food. That's what Lord Special, special Chef sauce. The, the most innocuous of the delivery systems. Over a million served. Could it be? A million? One bite, bite of the apple. We are all lost. lost. Eat it. Superman, blow the computer. No! Not with Talia. Destruction of protocols. Initiate. Meticulous elimination. Priority one. one. All OMAC engage. And the screen goes black. And Talia slumps forward in her harness of wires. Then a single message blinking over and over. Commence. OMAC war. Six pairs of eyes stare. And flash barrels into the room. Okay, I've been all over the place and they're everywhere. Every major city, and it's growing. We're gonna need a massive response. He stops, takes in the devastation. The beaten heroes, the flashing message. What did I miss? If it's a war he wants. By all the gods, we'll give him war. In outer space, in the silence, brother I. Sleek, black, waiting, watching the gathering storm over New York City. Storm clouds. The setting sun makes them purple, orange, and blood red. On a rooftop in Lower Manhattan, they're all there, all but Batman. Gathered, waiting shoulder to shoulder for the battle they know is coming, they scan the skies over the harbor. Nothing. Metahuman elimination. That's us. We're the priority targets. They'll come here first. There's no time to clear the city, so watch your collaterals. They can hit us, but we protect the population at all costs. But they are the population. There are people inside those machines. This is going to be tough. Tough is what we do. He's right. The others nod. It's what they do. A moment while they contemplate, consider, then... Is it just me, or is this kind of cool? They look. All of us here, together, saving the world. You know. Everyone stares forward, scans the skies. Anyway, it's, it's always been kind of a dream of mine. A pause. Then the team breaks. Mine too. Yes. Same here. Absolutely. I confess. Their faces say it all. Another pause. Shame Batman's not here. Inside Maxwell Lord's control room, Batman works the computer, trying to break in and shut it down. Above him, Talia, tethered to the machine. Batman pounds the controls. He can't crack the system. He looks up, decides. He pulls the cables, yanks them, hacks at them, one by one they fall away, all except for one embedded in her heart. She falls forward into his arms, and her eyes blink open to find his. Beloved, my beloved. Talia. I'm sorry, so sorry. I just wanted you so much, and for that. She looks at her metallic hands. The price I pay. Human tears in her machine eyes. They're dimming, the light going out. Stay with me. I can feel it. The machines, they feed off the energy inside, draining. He's losing her, and he knows it. But she's got something to tell him. She grabs him, pulls him close. He's moving, Max. The mind of the machines, he's looking for a new host. It'll be an evolution, something greater than all the others. Look... And the light is gone. She goes limp. Batman leads forward and kisses her. His lips of flesh, hers of metal. Enough charge to wake her, just for a moment. Beloved, I should have been. And the last cable snaps off, releasing her. Batman's left with her body, heavy in his arms. No. It's me. I should have been. He touches her face. A better man. Over the Atlantic Ocean, a single OMAC glides fast and low over the water. Next to it, another OMAC, and another, and another. 
spanning the ocean surface, the full force of the Omax swarm. On the rooftop in Lower Manhattan, still waiting. They're taking their sweet time. How many will it be, do we think? We'll find out. Will six of us be enough? A voice from behind them. Seven. Wally West, dressed in his knockoff uniform, like Flash's twin, five sets of eyebrows are raised. Wally? Thought you could use some help. Hey, Wonder Woman. No, uh uh-uh, no way. Come on, Uncle Barry, I can do this. Green Lantern looks to Wonder Woman for an explanation. His nephew. Apparently he's fast. Now there are two of them. Flash is shaking his head. No way. Something happens to you, Iris would kill me. Go home. Please. Flash, we're short-handed. And hardly at full strength. Their injury's evident. Flash knows she's right. Okay, but hang back. No risks. Done. He makes introductions, pumping hands energetically. Hey, how you doing? I'm Wally, Wally West, but you can call me Flash 2 or Flash Junior, maybe. I was thinking Kid Flash at first, but it seems a little, you know, Junior League. But whatever you guys come up with, who makes those calls? Superman? You have got to be kidding. Grapnel Dart hits the water tower and Batman pulls himself onto the roof at the end of a zipline. He staggers to a landing. It's moved. Max transferred the control to a new host. It'll be a single source, something directing all the others. And Talia? Batman just shakes his head. What are we looking for? I'm not sure, but it'll be in one of those. He points. On the horizon, a black speck flying low over the water, and it's moving fast, growing, expanding as it gets closer and closer, becoming a cloud, a dark blue cloud of death, the Omax Swarm. Aquaman, you're the first line of defense. Got it. Aquaman leans forward, sends out a high-pitched sonar signal. The signal travels out over the New York Harbor. When it hits the waves, the water erupts. Orcas, killer whales, glistening black and white. Dozens and dozens of them breach the surface, shoot up into the air and snag their jaws onto the low-flying Omax, dragging the first wave down into the sea. On the rooftop, for the first time, the whole Justice League, together and ready for anything. Wait for it. Boy, there's a lot of them. We can handle it. It'll be an evolution OMAC, the host. Something bigger, badder than the rest. Something, something like, like that. Green Lantern's looking behind them, at the Flash. Or at least at what used to be the Flash. Because he's in the late stages of transforming into OMAC Ultra. The deadliest OMAC. Twice the size of the others, and red. Its steel armor is bright, shining red. Uncle Barry? And a wall of laser energy blows the whole team off the roof. On the riverfront park, Superman hits the ground first, digging up cement in front of the river wall. He's back up quick enough to catch Wally tumbling in midair. Green Lantern snags Aquaman before he plows into the pavement. Batman, Wonder Woman, and John pull up. What happened? Planet Krypton. The birds. I told him that stuff was junk. Omak Ultra is almost on them. The glow from his eye. Beat back the swarm. I'll take care of this. Go. Aquaman leaps the railing, dives into the river. Wally West speeds off on top of the water. The others hit the sky, just as Omak Ultra blows a hole in the turf of Battery Park. In the sky above Lower Manhattan, Superman bullets straight up to meet Omak Ultra. Lands two fists, clean, spins the machine out of control. Its energy beam spits out wild, takes out the whole 34th floor of the MetLife building, glass and debris. Superman flies around behind it, clamps onto its back. Omak Ultra reaches behind and pulls Superman off, lifts him overhead and rockets him straight down, deep into a crater of concrete and asphalt. Outside Wall Street in Manhattan, a single Omak glides down the financial district. Stockbrokers run for their lives, NYPD officers unload revolvers, shotguns, the bullets pinging off the metal. One guy in a suit stumbles, looks back as a tendril shoots out of the hovering Omak, slips into his body, he begins to transform, infected. But before the machine can rise, a giant green metal sledgehammer slams down on the shell, cracking it wide open. The guy inside scrambles back to his feet and runs, looking back at Green Lantern. He swings his ring's projection again, pulverizes the other Omak. Its host drops to the street. On the river, Wally West runs in circles, throws up a vortex of water and wind. It sucks Omaks in, shoots them out to Aquaman. On the back of an orca, 
Directing his subjects, giant octopuses sling their arms, drag the machines down and under. Up in the sky, Superman and Olmac Ultra face to face over the city. The Flash Olmac's red eye, it fires, hits Superman straight in the face. Should incinerate him, melt the skin off his face, but this is Superman. He claws his way upstream, clamps a hand over the eye, laser energy shooting out beneath his fingers, digs in and rips the single eye out of the Omac Ultra's head. The machine screams, its mechanical guts exposed. But just for a second, the skin of the robot morphs closed and a new eye takes the old one's place. <coughs> Superman is caught off guard. The energy beam sends him pinwheeling backwards and through the glass walls of a downtown condo and right out the other side. In a downtown church, Wonder Woman is balanced on a steeple. She takes incoming rounds from dozens of killer machines. She deflects them with her bracelets, ricocheting the energy beams back into the Omax, blasting their heads clean off. In a Manhattan park, Jean Jean's is surrounded on all sides. Ten Omax, ten sets of killer razor blades. They charge, flying at him with blinding speed, razors swinging. With only inches to spare, Jean vanishes. The power of intangibility. Their blades tear into one another and they fall in a clatter of ripped metal. In the city streets of Lower Manhattan, Superman and Omac Ultra, deep in battle, giving no quarter. Man versus machine, uneven matchup. Superman rips a lamppost out of the ground, swings for Omac Ultra, impact, and it just bends around the robot. No harm. The Omac grabs the post and whips Superman off the other end, slams him a foot deep into the side of a building, and it's on Superman with its razor blade. It swings, misses, slices a deep groove into the bricks, like a hot knife through butter. Superman grabs its arm and forces the razor back on the giant machine. The point of the blade aimed directly at its heart. He's about to ram it home when... Cow! No! Batman dives in front of the blade, protecting the Omac from destruction. Bruce, what are you doing? The Flash! He's inside, still alive. The Omac Ultra swings for Batman's head with its pincer hand. Superman grabs it, holds. The strain against the force of the machine, Superman scans with his x-ray vision, and inside the OMAC Ultra is the Flash, hooked up to the machine, the network of circuits buried in his body. It's feeding off his life energy. That's why it's so much stronger than the others. Flash's eyes are shut. The pulse of his still beating heart is loud, driving the OMAC. Outside... Get out of the way. You'll kill him. Not Flash, just the OMAC. He'll revert. The Omac Ultra is still fighting. It clamps onto Superman's arms with its pincers. A crushing squeeze. If he does, the control will jump to another machine. We'll never find it. We'll lose the connection. Superman is losing his grip when... Jean Jean's lands. He takes the pincer arm and drives it against the wall, holding, helping. Wonder Woman is next. She lassos the Omac's legs, holding it down. Jean, use your mind. See if you can revive him. The Martian places his palm on the Omac, and inside the Omac, Flash, still unconscious, through the hum and the heartbeat. Flash, Flash, wake up. You must wake up. Nothing. Then, cutting through the noise, Uncle Barry! Flash's eyes shoot open, wide, terrorized. Wally? Outside, the Omac's head swivels like it's looking for something. Finds Wally West, standing with the others. The voice that emanates is... Maxwell Lords. Wally, is that you? Yes, yes. Flash, listen to me. You are the host. It's in you, directing the machines. See if you can control it. Shut it off. Inside, the Flash struggles, thrashes, fights to stay awake. It's... I can feel it. It's something dark. It's so strong. It's Max. Fight it, Flash. Outside, Green Lantern and Aquaman join. This war, they're regrouping. We've only got seconds. He throws up a wall of green light, a safety barrier. It's... It knows I'm awake. And searching, searching, looking for another host. You have to kill it. Kill me! No! No, hold on to Max's mind, Flash. Don't let him go. You can do it. Please, kill this thing. Here they come. Oh, Max, moving toward them by the hundreds. I'm losing him. I'm losing him. Strongest will, Flash. Strongest will. Inside. Bravest heart. And he smiles. He's got it. I don't 
know what to do. Calm. Serene. I'll be back in half a sec. And he vibrates. Faster than we've ever seen him. Rattling the bolts of the Olmec. Building. Faster and faster. Until he explodes. Out of the Olmec shell and into a world where... Time stops. Stands still. Literally. Like the universe hits the pause button. The raging battle freezes. Flying Olmax in midair, superheroes in mid attack, smoke, debris, explosions, all just stop. He's in the speed force, and it's just like he said peaceful, quiet, a sudden crushing silence. He takes a moment to look around at this hellish scene. Then he steps away, slowly at first, then faster, then faster, until he's at his house on his little suburban street. Kids are frozen on their sidewalk bikes. Sprinkler water never hits the grass. Flash skids to a halt in front of his own house, steps in through the front door. In his living room, Iris Allen sits on the couch. News footage of the Omac War freeze-framed on the set. Her face is a mask of worry. The Flash, Barry Allen, her husband, sits gently next to her. Uh, baby, you look so worried. Don't be worried, okay? I don't want you to worry. He puts a hand to her still, soft cheek, still warm. I know you can't hear me, can't see me, but I had to see you, to say... He can't bring himself to say it. Goodbye. He presses his lips to hers, holds on. Here's the funny thing. You want to know what it is? It turns out I can save the whole world. I can. So that's what I'm going to do. There are tears in his eyes. They roll down his face. The only things moving in the entire universe. Because you're in it. He touches her heart and looks in her eyes. And a single tear pools in each one. Like he's gotten through. Somehow he's gotten through. On the front porch, the flash takes a last moment. He looks around at the evening falling on his little piece of the world. Frozen in time. What a beautiful world. And in this moment between beats of the human heart... A warp in time and space grabs hold of him like an elastic band and snaps him back to the city streets of Lower Manhattan, where time starts again at full speed. The Omac War, the sudden noise of the battle is deafening. The Justice League fends off fire from the Omac army, all gathered around the Omac Ultra. The machine is whole again. Flash is back inside. In Max's voice, I hope this thing can move. See you guys later. Omac Ultra releases its grip on Superman, shakes off Jean Jones, slides out of Wonder Woman's lasso, and takes off like a bat out of hell. Down the street, knocking Omax aside like bowling pins, right out over the river and into a world of speed. The Omac Ultra, shining red, moving at impossible speeds across the terrain of the earth, over oceans, mountains, prairies, faster and faster, until the Flash actually runs out of the machine's shell, pulling a trail of shattered OMAC molecules behind him like a comet's tail, faster and faster, around and around the whole world. Mountain ranges dissolve in front of him, cities collapse like they're made of colored water, cooling into a gleaming liquid road. Come on, Barry, faster! A road stretching straight into forever. He pushes and pushes, looks over to see, at his side, suddenly. Whoa! Go back, Wally. You're going too fast. Not fast enough. He looks back at the molecular OMAC trail behind him, stretching for thousands and thousands of miles. Uncle Barry, what are you doing? The two fastest men on the planet going faster than any man has ever gone, side by side. The Flash smiles at his nephew and says his last words. Tag, you're it. And then he gives it everything he's got. Powering up, leaving Wally in his dust as he enters the very limit of speed. The light from every star in the universe streaking alongside him in the vast tunnel stretching eons in front of him to a vanishing point. A vanishing point he's sprinting for. A pinprick of light that grows and grows and grows closer and closer, rushing right for him. It's the speed barrier. A cosmic wall of light, shimmering undulating like liquid glass as large as the universe itself. And the Flash doesn't hesitate. He slams into it, 
full force, full speed, and for a nanosecond he slows. But the molecules of the OMAC are right behind him, recombining, reforming into the massive OMAC Ultra. The machine hits him square in the back and drives him both through the speed barrier, pulverizing all the life in the universe into a blast of shards that explode in every direction, becoming stars, distant stars, all in place, all silent. The Flash is gone. Gone. Now in the streets of Lower Manhattan, one by one, the Olmecs start to come apart. Look! Disintegrating, their shells falling away, turning to dust, the human hosts inside dropping to the ground, bewildered. What happened? Wally West streaks up to join the others. He's ashen. He did it. He did it. He almost falls into Wonder Woman's arms, winded and helpless. He went through. He, he broke through. Th the others gather around. The speed barrier. Then he's gone. He's gone. A ripping sound, a tearing, a sundering, and from out of the darkening sky, from a fold in space and time, something red appears, something familiar, something they know immediately is the Flash's uniform. Empty. It drifts down to them, borne on currents of still air. Batman catches it in his arms. It drapes there like a dead body, red against black, stark and startling. Wally West wants to cry. No. No. He drops to his knees. Superman kneels next to him, puts a hand on his shoulder. Wally, look at what he did. What he saved. Wally nods, holding it together. With pride. The whole world. Batman is holding the last remains of Barry Allen, the Flash. His face is anguished. Just look. Look at what one man can do. Omac robots fall from the sky like rain all over the city, and a bell tolls, sad and mournful. Today, inside the Metropolis Cathedral, golden and colored stained glass light falls on a casket closed in front of the altar. Now we know who's being laid to rest. In the front pew, the entire Justice League, each of them dressed in mourning black. Iris Allen, now the widow, is trying to hold it together. She leans in for comfort to the strong shoulder of Wally West, the new Flash. Nighttime in the cemetery. Batman carries his tribute, a single red rose, to Flash's gravesite. He kneels. A long, heavy moment as he comes to grips with what he did. From his heart. Godspeed, Flash. Barry Allen. Godspeed. And he lets his flower drop. Daytime on a street corner, a newspaper, the headline reads, World Peace Resumes. Below, a picture of the OMAC War, the subhead, Hero Alliance Possible? A pedestrian drops a quarter in front of Maxwell Lord's Planet Krypton Restaurant, boarded up, a sign in the window, closed. Inside the Fortress of Solitude, in the farmhouse, everyone is assembled, making decisions, big decisions about the future. We're stronger together. We've proven our trust. We've earned this. My vote is yes. I'm with John. I'm in. I'd be honored. Wally. He's hesitant. I don't know. This should be Uncle Barry, not me. We want you with us. Flash. She's used the name. She's given it to Wally. A gift. Okay. I'll try. Wonder Woman takes his gratitude with a gracious smile. Then count me in, too. She turns to Superman. He can barely meet her eyes. That you'd even have me. After... But my vote is yes. Yes. And now all eyes turn to Batman, standing apart from the others, alone among these heroes, and there's a silence. His answer? No. And a little of the air goes out of the room. No. This isn't the time to go back in your cave to work alone. It's not that. He looks at the others, their strengths, their powers, at his own damaged body. I don't belong here, with you, with all of you. You have power, you have... He's laying himself bare. I'm not the Batman, it's just a mask I wear. He pulls back his mask. I'm Bruce Wayne, and I have one weakness, I'm human. 
Revealing his human face, Superman says what they're all thinking. No, Bruce. That's your strength. Our strength. He looks him in the eye, holds out his hand, and Batman, Bruce Wayne, takes it. A firm shake, a firm commitment to the future. Wonder Woman takes his hand too, then John, and the others would too, except... Holy, what is that? Soup, is this a ComSat link you got here? Because is that thing real? He's looking at Superman's old cabinet TV. It shows a satellite feed, a ComSat hookup monitoring outer space. And descending on Earth, a creature. Freaky, alien, and looking angry as all creation. It's got five tentacle legs, a vicious mouth of teeth, and it's huge. It looks like a starfish. Yeah, the size of Rhode Island. Looks like Starro here is headed right for us. They all look around the room at one another, cautious smiles. Without a word, they gear up. The flash starts <laughs> to vibrate, revving his engine. <clears throat> Green Lantern projects battle armor from his ring. Uh. Aquaman snaps his harpoon hand into place. Uh. John Jones pops metal spikes out all over his body. Batman uh. pulls his bat mask back on tight. Wonder Woman clamps her Amazonian bracelets. Superman clenches his fists, fills up his chest. Let's do it. Together, the Justice League. Launching themselves through outer space to battle Starro the Conqueror. Tiny against its intergalactic mass, but they're strong and determined. And we know with utter certainty that they'll keep us all safe. <laughs>